What's up, Jasperinians? It's me, Greg Miller, and this is the Game Over Greggy Show. This week I'm joined by the Pride of Long Island, Colin Moriarty. Go USA! The producer mm. slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. I'll back that. Go USA. Why not? And the pure one, Tim Geddes. I'm rooting for Barcelona. <laughs> oh, good lord, everybody. <laughs> if you didn't know, the Game Over Greggy Show is a weekly podcast where four, sometimes five, best friends gather around this table, each bringing a random topic of discussion to enjoy with you. If you like that, make sure you get the new episode as an MP3 every Friday over at GameOverGreggy.BandCamp.com. I was close and screwed oh, yeah. that one up. She did. Uh, over there, we charge you $1, and it goes up every Friday, and you have a great time. If you don't think we're worth the dollar, you go to YouTube.com slash GameOverGreggy, and each and every topic is broken out day by day as a video until the whole show posts on Friday as one big video. But then you should probably go to the band camp and get the MP3 over there. The new one, yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, you can also go to districtlines.com slash gameovergreggy for t-shirts. How's we got a lot of those. Yeah. We got a ton of them. We, we got, got a few more coming. Oh, do we? Ones, yeah. When do you think they'll be up? Uh, by the time shortly. this posts? Probably by the time this posts, Holy I would imagine. Holy cow, you gotta go to that districtlines.com slash gameovergreggy. I know. If I knew which ones they were, I would, I would tease them right now. No. We're probably going to have the Team Fat shirt up yeah, shortly. Finally, yeah. So if you're a member of Team Fat, or if you just want to be, I think you'll soon be able to wrap it Team Fat, again, as I always say, is a lifestyle. It's a mindset. Mm. It's not about your actual size. It's about that. I'm done with this burrito. No, wait. I'm going to finish it. I'm, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to power through this last half and eat yeah, it. Yeah, so it's not necessarily a weight thing. It's more not about, at all. It's no, pretty no. much a weight thing. Though. It becomes a weight thing. <laughs> no, but the thing, the thing about Team Fat also is it's, like, it's not like other teams where you have to like try out and like try hard. Team Fat... We, we bring yeah we're accepting we bring everyone into team fat no well, I, team I fat. like the original idea for the team fat shirt though which is that we were only going to have it available and in, in large and above no so no, you no could, I, it was only going to be 2x and oh, above I'm sorry, was two, the original idea I'm sorry 2x and above so you can prove it yeah but I'm a I'm, a, I'm not You're only part of, for sure. I'm not only part of team fat I'm, I'm one of the co-captains of team sure, fat sure I'll give you that <laughs> and uh and I I wear a medium. On a bad day, I wear a large. Wait, on Team Fat, do we have goalies? Because you would be the goalie. I would, yeah. I would elect you the goalie. Sure, I, I assume we have positions. Let's assume it's like uh, soccer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, 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 what am I, Nick? What are you? Yeah. You be the guy with the, bus clip, the guy with the clipboard that's uh, just can telling I everyone bus? what's yeah, going on. Uh, I'm just going to bring everyone fat. from one fat place to another fat that's place. That's fine. You can be the bus driver. That's fine. Yeah. Um, that works for me. Um, Colin. Yes. You're doing the normal thing about to pour yourself some burbs, as we call it here. Yeah, the game burbs. Yeah, burbs. I've been... I, there's been a long-standing thing I've been meaning to do on this show, and I keep forgetting. And it's putting a silver bullet on ice. Now, before you start this, you I saw you, I saw you try to sneak this in on me earlier. Yeah. I want to tell you right now, you're you're already doing it wrong. What did I do wrong? You're gonna Are you going to pour it into this cup? Yeah. No. What do I need? It needs to be the biggest cup you can find, so when it froths over, you can just put ice. It needs to be that cup. Here. Let's do this. Oh God. But I gave you the little glass, too. Yeah. Okay. Well, See, I'm um, going to get another I'll glass. I'll chug then. the water. I'll chug the water. Chug the water. I'll chug the water too. Oh Jesus! Oh my God! This is gonna be a mess. Fill time. I'm just mad that I have to listen to Greg swallow for fucking the next. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's, like, it's like this is like my seventh layer. Of oh, you're just screaming, I'm trying to get out of the room. All right, keep it away from me, your cooties. I'm not gonna. Wait. So now, do I need little cu- ice cubes or big ice cubes? Well, I would like, just put. I would. I would do little ones because you like, you have to get the ones that like. Oh, you got both. You yeah. have to. Uh, you have to make sure they melt a little bit so they just kind of float to the top. Yeah. You know, do you want to do, you, this sounds like a production I'll do it let All me right. do it there's three it. you talk you're the moderator <laughs> okay. of this panel hey everybody I'll get still this. the game over Greggy show about to do this have thing. you tuned out yet a long time ago Nick went to some... What was that? Ever? It was a bachelor party. A bachelor party and you were all dehydrated and somebody put their Coors Light on ice. Yeah. No, what happened was we were... Yeah, we were dehydrated. We wanted one more alcoholic beverage uh, for the day, but we were too tired to actually go get anything. Sure. So someone had Coors Light cans okay. that we were able to acquire and they were warm. Now pour the way you want it poured. Oh, no. You just got you to cannonball it right there. Cannonball! Oh, there you go. Don't even bother. That's a rough pour. I mean, this pour. is Coors Light. Don't even bother with it. Well, that's the cool thing about the ice is... <laughs> bother with it. The ice, you just kind of... It just kind of goes. That's the roughest know? beer pour I've ever seen yeah, in my you life. Don't need it. it's Fast and right to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> what, are trying, what, what are you trying to make a big deal out of What are you trying to prove here? What are you trying well, to prove right there? I, I see. Boom. Now, now, what I like about it is you get a little froth. Yeah, I see it. Cheers. A little cheers froth. In. We're doing yeah, okay. we're cheersing. Wait, I, I don't know it, what you want me to make do. It cold, make it cold. Make it cold. Just get a little. Make it cold. It's already yeah, cold. It was it's a fridge. silver bullet. Just You've seen the commercials. Wiggle like, it. People don't know what to wear. No, you're not. Wiggle, wiggle. That's the thing is, you're gonna take a sip. It's gonna taste like Coors Light. You're gonna be fine with it. Wait a few minutes, then take another sip. That's when it's gonna hit you. You winked at me when you. Yeah, I like the wink. Cheers again. It does taste like Coors Light. It's Coors Light. Fantastic. That's great. You're enjoying it, aren't you? Well, there's not. I mean, it's a more watered down Coors Light. It tastes even less like Coors Light. It's like now. more filtered than it already is. It's the Cadillac of beers. Oh wow! Oh, right there. This is the right Cadillac there. of beers. It's the Etzel of beers. By the way, 
I was just thinking about this real quick. I, uh, there's an A's logo, an Oakland A's yeah, logo. Why is that? In San Francisco, which is where we think we have a Giants one. But I like how token it is. Like, this is such bullshit. Like, it's just an A's logo over a baseball. Yeah, it could be anything. And then an A's logo, and then it's just a green bar. <laughs> so you know that they're just like, they're manufacturing these for the Rockies and the Blue mm, Jays yeah. and all this. No, this ain't, there's nothing unique about this. There's also, no did reasons. your corner store, did they go over to Oakland to get those because they're cheaper there? Like, probably. Right? That's probably exactly what happened. I mean, our corner store, who knows where they get most yeah. of their goods. <laughs> <laughs> the falls off the, the booze is cheap. That's all yeah, I get. That's, that's yeah, true. And they got the big, the big bottle of Coke yeah, back. back. They had little tiny ones for a while. No, they... Well, again, they probably... Medio probably Litro. Old ass Coke. That got bigger. It literally is just coming down and tasting like nothing. That's what it's that's just negating yes, all yes. the points. Why would you drink this? Because it's, it's an nothing. offense against beer. It's like water with alcohol in it. I want to take it. I want to... Coors Light with ice is the offense against beer, but not just Coors Light itself. No. I understand that. No. I went right back now. to Missouri this weekend for yeah, a wedding. You guys drank a lot of Coors Light. We drank a lot. No, we drank a lot of. There was some bush in there. Oh, drank some God. bush. Drank some natty light. Oh, natural light. <laughs> I haven't had natural light since a natural ice since I was like sixteen. Here's years old. the thing about Not- it: is like it, it didn't occur to me until we were coming home, and I was thinking a bit about it. I hadn't taken a beer out of like an ice cooler in so long and has like that rim of ice in the you know the can uh-huh. it was so weird to do that after not having done it for so so long you know what i mean and then but then yeah we were out there shotgunning some beers in the parking lot of the wedding doing it the missouri antler way and that's wait now that was the wedding by the way it was awesome yeah fantastic i killed it with the best man speech everybody loved it did you yeah Last best man speech I gave was... Wait, like, wasn't there... There was a I few best man, right? Right. You didn't blew, crush it? Blew him out of the water. You, so yours was, be, yours was oh the best? Oh, my God. You kidding me? They had so no you should have been coming. selected as well, I was, the best I, man. I was selected to go last in the speeches because they already knew I'd probably be bringing the thunder. Yeah. And when he handed me the mic, and it, well, first off, the DJ goes into the mic. He's like, uh, "There's, I'll, run, I'll give you the scenario here of what's happening, right? Yeah, there were three best men at this wedding. So then for the speeches, there were two bridesmaids between us. So boy, girl, nice. boy, girl. Nice. <laughs> and so is the, in the tell, be- wait, stop right there and just tell sure. us about the, the two bridesmaids that were in between you. <laughs> Don't stop. Continue. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, and so <laughs> we're uh, coming into this. I'd already made claims to the, my, my groom, my liege, That's that I'm like, oh, man, these the, your other two best men are fucked. Like, really, I speak for a living. You think they're going to be? And he's like, no, I know. They, blah, 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 blah. And so I, I asked them in the hotel room how long their speeches were. And like one guy's like, oh, it's like two minutes. The other guy's, I know there's three of us. It's short and sweet, real sweet. And I'm like, all right, great. Mine's like five. Like, because it's just in my head. Again, yeah. I don't rehearse things. But a great bits- color five minutes could be five minutes. Could be thirty five minutes. You, know. <laughs> you, you know, don't really know. You know from many and up at noon. Yeah. Nick, I got this joke. I'm just gonna rant. I'm like, oh god. That's all it goes. There it is. Oh, it's over. No, it's not over. It's gonna keep going. Then you do the thing you're like this. It's just here's my god damn it. Yeah, yeah. You know that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> And then you look at me, and I'm like, oh, we're over. Okay, yeah. clapping. Yeah. <laughs> but no, this one was going to be a real five. I knew what I was doing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I got the, I beforehand, I had, my whole speech revolved around a lab coat. And so I brought a lab coat to give to the bride at the end of my speech. So beforehand, I'd gone out. <laughs> Wait, what, is she a chemist? No, no, it's a long story <laughs> about my, my, my groom, my liege. And I gave it to the DJ before I went up there, of course, and said, hey, I'm going to use this, yada, yada, yada. So when he got to me, he does a little introduction for everybody. He's like, all right, next is Greg Miller. And I have a feeling this guy's he got a crazy bag of tricks. And everyone laughed because like, most people there know me or whatever. And I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And then I took the mic and I tried to go, oh, what's up, everybody? And like... Boom, like silence. A pin could drop in that room and you'd hear it. And everybody was on me for the entire five minutes. I had, I had him laughing, had him crying. That's dynamite. awesome. Nailed it. And Destroyed. then what happened with the lab coat? I gave it to the, the bride and it was a touching moment for everyone. I don't want you Good. to explain why. No. Either. Just let it That's go. That's a personal that. story. One day, mm. you know, maybe the groom will be on the podcast and he, that we can tell it in his Now, presence. who was the groom? Kyle Hayes. All right. So, Kyle Hayes. I met him. Yeah, he was yeah. here. You met his you met his bride-to-be. Mm. Or his now wife. I met him, now, actually. Now, Kyle, I want, you to, I want you to show Kyle this video. I think it's really important that he sees it. Because... Oh. Yeah, that's yeah, true. there it is. Can I stop now? No. Yeah, uh, it's not mixing it. It's not doing anything. Cannonball. It makes me feel good. Cannonball. Cannonball. Now I want I want you to show Kyle Hayes this video real quick because I really feel like this was an indecisive move right. to have three best men. Now two best men, still not a decisive move. You gotta have one best man, but three best men. Here's my thing. No, I'm I'm sorry. It's not acceptable because now it's putting <laughs> now it's putting you guys all in an awkward position when nope. you get married. It wasn't at all. No, it wasn't at all. Because here's the thing: is that I thought what I I was touched. Who's going to be your best man, right? Well, I've been married before, and Kyle was my best man. Oh, okay. Yeah. So well, he's so out. That's how you get around this. Yeah, exactly. Just keep getting just married. Keep getting married. Right. I, rather right. than get married yeah, and yeah. have three best men, I'll get married three times and yeah. have individual mm. best men. But I thought it was a good way he did it because it was a way to honor all of us. Because he, he said it 
one at a point in time, it wasn't like we were three friends. It was his brother who obviously mm-hmm. grew up with him, his friend from high school who grew up with him, and then his me who grew up with him at college and then into adult. Yeah, that's nice. And that's that, nice. that was his thing of doing it right. Still, you got to pick. You, you got to pick. I mean, like, it's gonna be. It's. I, I love. I love you. You'll be yeah. in my wedding party. Yeah, I know. It, my I already know what my wedding party is in my head. Ramon. Me. And my brother, best man my, is your brother. My brother will be my best. See, man. here's the bullshit about weddings: is that that's a bunch of fucking bullshit. <laughs> All right, like, and I knew that. That I honestly, before this wedding and before I was asked, never thought I'd be somebody's best man because all my real close friends have. Brothers, Brothers pretty much. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, well, there you go. That's the end of it for me. So true story though. I, the last wedding I was at, where I was best man, the uh, maid of honor was not one of the sisters, and the reason why was because she had sort of asked her sister out of you know nepotism and saying yeah you know you're my eldest sister and we're closest i guess in the family will you be my of honor and the sister said no and it wasn't a no as in i'm sliding you i don't i don't want to support your marriage she said your best friend is Mm. this other person i appreciate that we have a great bond i love you you're my sister forever but this is your wedding who do you really want she's like well i kind of want my other friend she's like that's a good sister done I like that. And it was See, awesome. And, she was, and then she... I'm bo- I was my brother's best man. And yeah. I was 17. Yeah. Drunk. Yeah. Gave that fucking speech. Did you destroy mm-hmm. it? Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. It's on I, video somewhere. I should find it and put, we can put yeah, it up as a video. Do that. I crushed my brother's best man speech. Oh, my God. Crushed I crushed it. That sounds like a good time. But I, I, I didn't... The last one I gave was at... The last one I went to, I was actually best man. And I gave a really heartfelt speech that had I gone first would have been amazing. But the maid of honor... We had this back and forth. We were planning. We were planning this thing where we were going to talk trash to each other, and then I sort of forgot, but she oh, did not. No. So when she came up to bat, she had like five pages of just blast. She blasted me in front of the entire room for like a good ten minutes. It's like a of roast like, because we had this back and forth. I was like, "Oh no, I'm responsible for them getting together," and she was like, "No, I'm responsible for." Her, which clearly she was, but I was like, "This is fun. We should yeah. do this." And then when it got to me, everyone was like, "Oh, Nick's going to light her up," and I didn't. Everyone was like, "Oh, it was a good speech." But she won. She won mm. straight up. People came up to me. They were like, "You you, you tried real hard. You tried real hard. They you tried real. You like tried real good. It was nasty." I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you with th- this thought real quick because I thought this was a kind of a clever move. We're talking about the wedding parties and yeah, the, sorry, and, sorry, and, and the configuration of the parties and the best men and the the, bra- and the maids of honor and stuff. I was really really close. It's getting with. so bad now. Yeah, it's good. You're it's, interrupting it's a me. Sipping wine. You're interrupting me. That's how the show goes. No. I never interrupt anyone on the show. I bet you bet you never noticed that. I know I noticed because people were like, hey, Colin, never, literally in comments for the first 10 episodes, <laughs> Scarpino, stop interrupting Colin. He never interrupts anyone. Uh, I was just going to say that I was friends with, uh, we don't talk much anymore, which makes me really sad, but I was, I was really good friends with this girl in, in college, just hanging out all the time. It was totally platonic. And uh, mm-hmm. she was just a good friend of mine. We used to talk about, um, we like used to take, we took a bunch of freshman classes together, just became really close and we just hang out all the time. And uh, we always talked about how it would be cool if I got married to, uh, to my girlfriend at the time that we she would actually be in my wedding party. And then she would wear a dress that was like matching somewhat the guy's suits. And then my girlfriend at the time would have a guy like in her party. I've never seen anything like that where there's like some crossover I've seen in it. gender. I'd like to do something like that. I feel like it needs to, there's too, it's too rigorous. Just men, just women, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a straight heterosexual marriage. Um, you know, it differs obviously. Mm-hmm. If, you know, if you're, you know, it could be all men or all women, obviously. But uh, you know, so I wanted to throw that out there because I think it's a good idea. And even though I'll probably never do it because I'm really not close to any girls like that anymore, someone out there should take that idea. It's I'm definitely. I mean, that's definitely in my plans. Like, there's one, possibly two girls that are definitely going to be in that party. I didn't Where, have anyone. Nick? How Nick? How deep is Nick in the rotation? So th- here's the thing. Like this, you were saying earlier about there's a lot of a weird thing where there's the schools. And then there's the after school. Yeah. What? I'm best man, straight up. Oh, well, see, that's the thing. That straight makes up. it really harsh because Nick is the best, best man yeah, it's ever. True. I'm but just, so, just, I, I got some... just let me throw the bachelor party. I don't care if I'm in. I don't even have to go to the wedding. That, that's the, the thing. Party. I want you to throw the bachelor party. Spoilers sure. to you. Remember last week on the show when we were talking about uh, being a best man or whatever, Nick's the best. He should be hired. There should be a movie about it. Mm-hmm. Kevin Hart is making that movie. It's coming out in 2015. Mm-hmm. I know. Some people tweet. I was so disappointed. I was like, that's a good idea. Thanks, Kevin Hart. Mm hmm. He's, um, he's my too. height too. He's really funny. <laughs> but the the best men kind of things are trick you know trickling down a little bit because I was my brother's best man and that's probably gonna be it I would assume. Uh, I was in my friend Doug's wedding party. I was in Nate's wedding Do party. It, Doug. Uh, my assumption is I'll be in Greg's wedding party when mm-hmm. he gets married if he gets married again. Mm-hmm. I'll be in my friend Mike's wedding party and Ramon's wedding party. But Ramon has a brother. All these guys have brothers. Ramon. So it's it just it's kind wow. of a precarious situation because my wedding party would be uh, Nick would officiate. The wedding, first of all, Done. Tim would be the ring bearer. Yes, 
then, then my best friend would be my brother. And then I'd have Greg, Ramon, Mike, and Nate would probably be my, my dudes. Mm-hmm. And uh, Wait, is he really going to officiate your wedding? Yeah, I want Nate. We, 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 we don't want a religious wedding. Uh, well, you're not oh, going to get it if you get can me. Can we live stream the entire thing? Yes. Including the reception? Yeah. The I will literally start off by singing a Queen song a cappella. The entire song. <laughs> I don't think I ever told you guys this. This is what we want to do. Because Cheryl doesn't like to be the center of attention at all. And neither do I. I think weddings are fucking awkward, personally. Like, I, I like going to them, but they're awkward. Like, if that was me, I wouldn't want that. So, like, what I want is, what Cheryl and I are going to do is we're just going to take $10,000 just go to Montauk on Long Island, which is like a really like the, the easternmost town on Long Island. Beautiful place. You have to drive all the mm-hmm. way out there. It's in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Rent a huge beach house and just say, everyone come for like a weekend. That's awesome. Just, and, and just 40 or 50 people. Just everyone just get fucking trash. You can stay if you want. If not, go fuck off. You can come for a day. You can come for all three days. I'm coming for all That's three days. Do. And I just I just decided in the Queen's on when she's coming down the aisle, I'm going to ask everyone. I'll be, everyone, please stand. Well, She's I'll gonna be too come down. To stand. <laughs> Greg will be passed out on the ground with like a chicken wing hanging out of his mouth. But, like maybe someone roll him over before he chokes to death. Um, and then I will sing the theme song from Highlander. It'll be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> she comes a cappella, no instrumentation needed because I have the voice of a cherub. Mm. It'll be beautiful. No, it's gonna be great. I'm looking forward to it. The mm. sad thing is we've been going for 17 minutes. We still haven't gotten our first. Album. This is this is a good what topic. The Over Greggy show is all about conversations with friends. Mm. Five best friends. Yes. Four best friends. I yeah. didn't actually have anyone. I didn't have best man anything. No, it was just me and my wife. Oh, it. you went to the courthouse. Well, because how are you going to be your own best man? That doesn't make oh, sense. It's good. Point. If anyone was going to be their own best man, that would be. You. Well, my yeah. brother, my brother was basically de facto my best man, but I shouldn't have. He a was your bride, a bridal party yeah. in heaven. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 we probably are going down that road. All I want is is a just a, I want just a blowout, drag down, knockout fucking oh, party. That's it. Oh. Yeah, but I mean we're going to have that. But that's the thing. The best man's duties is just. To throw the bachelor party. Beyond that, he's done. You got to give a speech. Beyond. Sorry, but uh, you said beyond. You don't have to say beyond. Yeah, no, beyond. No, no, no. But you didn't really say it. You kind of muttered it out through a like Coors Light haze. Do you enjoy this? Is all I'm no. Ask. It's terrible. Thank you. Okay. It's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. By the way, Greg, but I know you can't let good beer go to waste. We want to do your topic. We should just do my we're, topic first because we're already cut in. Then yours can can go. go. Well, do we want to just do what we just did as the fifth topic? That can just be in its own time. We just did a topic without trying, but we yeah. went for 15 minutes. Do we want all of them to be unbalanced? We can talk. We talked about how terrible this beer is. Tim, I leave it up to you. You're the expert. This is a good topic. I like this. This this is definitely its own topic. Okay, so that's done. So Sad. we're gonna have five videos. Yeah. Cool. Oh yeah. Okay. Do we? Do, five you, videos, do you like four extra videos? A lot of people seem to be happy. We were posting more stuff I'm on Saturday. My, my topic. I was asking them, not you. Five minutes. I think we should post fewer videos because it's scarcity principle. <laughs> then they'll really look forward like to the, 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 the stress sound effect kind of okay. kind of so we go from four effect. topics a week to one and a half yeah. four <laughs> topics a year how many times have you been best man that's it once oh yeah. this is the first time yeah probably my, really? own, my one and only I bet because again all this family bullshit mm. all these families screwing me over Greg yeah. if I get married again you can be my best man thank you cool I like that I'm not doing any of this co-best man crap Okay. It that's what I'm saying. Crap, it was sweet. Hayes has to make Hayes has to make a decisive decision if he gets married again it was great and 50% chance you will Sadly, I'm true. sorry, I'm looking, but there's seriously, there's 50 percent chance you might get married. It's true. Uh, he's got to make a decisive decision, mm. and I want it to be so decisive that it's none of the people that were already. I agree with that 100 percent too. I feel like you do have to decide, and that sucks because, like, for me, I have a lot of really close friends, and I feel like I'm gonna have to. De- I feel like I already decided. I think I just, just said it such a long time ago that my friend Curran, I'm like, sorry, everyone else that like wants me as the best man is probably gonna have me as the best man. Curran's my best man, but I still love you all. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how how good you treat him at the bachelor parties, half the fucking game anyway. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the bachelor parties can get rowdy and they can get raunchy. They can get raunchy. nasty. They can get fucking real nasty. They can get a little nasty. Real nasty. Yeah. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. In a damn real good way. Yeah. yeah. They get all dank and damn. Oh, jeez, with the dank and damn. All right, my topic. <laughs> I fucking hate the World Cup. And like, I there's so many. <laughs> There are so many caveats to this, so let's just get... Have you always hated this, no, or is it just let, this World just Cup? Just stick with me, because we okay. got to just boil this down mm. to the minute details. It's essence. I don't... The, the, the sport of soccer... Yes, I said soccer. When I tweet about soccer, don't correct me to football. I don't fucking care. I don't enjoy this sport. I don't participate or watch it. <laughs> now, here's... All right, I'm not oh, don't even get in the way right now, because that's like... We're not even to the... We're on the, the outer crust of my we're, argument. We're, up we're right trying now. to get to the core he here. We went for like 45 minutes in a meeting today. The thing about soccer, right, is that I am an 
American and I call it soccer. I understand the rest of the world does not. I respect that. I respect that Europe spells color with a U. I don't correct them every fucking time. So back the fuck up on the soccer business. Mm. So that's the, on the first part of this. Whenever I tweet about, like I, we tw- I tweeted the video when the World Cup started, right? Of like, what's the best sport? Or one of our previous topics. First off, I guess I jokingly said in there, soccer is the worst sport ever, or something. <laughs> Again, I have nothing against the sport of soccer. I don't enjoy watching it or playing it. That's fine for me. Here's what's starting to get under me about this World Cup is no one will shut the fuck up about it. Here's the next subtopic on this thing. (laughs) I understand that it's happening and it's a big deal for the whole world. That's fine. If you have tweeted about soccer before and you are a soccer fan, more fucking power to you. Tweet your goddamn balls off. Darren Brazil, go nuts. Craig Baradon. Craig Baradon, Ty Root, you guys talk about soccer a lot. You own jerseys. Cool. I'm glad. I'm. I know what I'm signed up for on that front. I, this would be akin to me yelling at Colin for tweeting about the Jets. Someone yelling at me about tweeting about Mizzou. You understand that we're more than just one thing. So if you're soccer, that's great. What's driving me crazy about the World Cup is all these motherfuckers who have never, ever, ever <laughs> spoken about soccer before suddenly tweeting their goddamn face off about fucking soccer. Shut up. I know you don't. There's people in my Twitter feed like, oh, that was a dynamite pass. You've never fucking talked about soccer. I know you don't care about sports. Shut the fuck up. And so, just back up. About, oh like, you don't God. need to be talking about soccer this much. I don't understand why this, uh, the global fascination, you're suddenly like, well, I'll tweet about it now and act like I'm in, like you care about it. And this all goes back to the whole, like, the thing we always have to talk about with gamer girls, right? You're a fake gamer. You're a fake. I, I'm doing the same thing. This is another reason I'm so mad about the fucking World Cup is the <laughs> fact that they are making me be the people I hate during the Super Bowl. We are nerds. We get that. We have nerd friends. But Colin and I enjoy football. So, I'm, you know, Super Super Bowl Sunday, we tweet about the Super Bowl. People are, oh, sports ball. Uh, for some reason, whenever a sport, you know, the fucking sports are on and people care, the people who don't care about sports and are video game nerds like us suddenly have to re- regress and suddenly forget what a touchdown is or how to get into a stadium. They're like, whoa, a football game. How do they get in the seats? I don't know. I've never been. I don't like sports. Is the game over yet? Shut the fuck up. But see, <laughs> by then doing this, by then bringing out this hate of the World Cup in me and in them, they're making me feel like it. But this is the problem, is that I'm not mad about you tweeting about soccer sports fans. I get it. I totally am fine with that. I want you to enjoy your shows and go watch it. I'm mad at all these Fairweather fans flooding my feed and then making it so I can't tell them to shut the fuck up. Because if I do that, <laughs> if I say that, I then become a hypocrite for the Super Bowl Sunday tweets I hate. But mind you, this World Cup goes on until July 13th. Shoot me in the fucking face, Tim. I don't want to see this anymore. And so it keeps going this way. And here's the other rub to it. The other layer. The kicker? To this fucking... Uh, Are uh, we in uh, the mantle now? We are. We're past the mantle. We're in the bubbling hot core over here. I saw today Variety tweet that the World Cup game between the U.S. and Germany was the highest ratings ESPN had ever had for a World Cup game. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's coming That's up, Thursday. right? Is that what's coming yep. up? Thank you. There it's you Thursday. Go. Thank you. I'm sorry, everybody. God, Greg doesn't know. So I've never been in this. What's a soccer ball? Football? I don't. <laughs> Highest ratings ever for a fucking ESPN <laughs> World Cup match. Fuck you. Fuck you. That proves you're all fair weather fans, too. Well, America's in it. Now we gotta care. Well, Jiminy Jellicker, what's happening? People originally tweeting about how much they hate the clock, then suddenly trying to explain it to me that it matters. And then I retweet Marty, who's like, all these fucking fake people are tweeting about soccer all of a sudden. And Marty puts at the top of his Twitter feed, you know, like, oh, hey, anybody have any strong opinions about soccer? To mock you. And I retweet it. To mock you. And then, real soccer fans (laughs) feel that they need to tweet me and correct me that it's football and actually start explaining why the game... Fuck off! I don't care! I am mocking you! Everyone shut up about the World Cup and leave me out of it. Except real people who care. If you put in the work and you are a soccer fan, go nuts! Everybody else, I fucking hope USA loses so soon so you'll all shut up. It's called football. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you waiting There's for that? There's a lot... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah, I know. There's it's a lot. lot. You got. You had a lot. I just. Of- I hate that they make me into the the Super Bowl guy. You know what I mean? I don't want to be that guy on Super Bowl Sunday tweeting about it. And that's why I haven't tweeted anything about it. 
No negative feedback about the World Cup on my Twitter feed because 140 characters is not enough to express why I'm angry. I'm not a link mad to this at video you for liking will help. soccer. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not mad. I hope the comments are with me on this. I'm not mad at you liking soccer. More power to you. Well, me. I think the soccer fans will understand what you're saying. The real soccer fans. <sighs> the one thing you said that resonated with me the most, and this is one of the things that bothers me a lot because I tweet a lot about hockey and football, mm-hmm. real football, not soccer, real football. As an American football, real football. Uh, is that... I feel like I should lift something. Yeah, yeah let's go lift and we'll Mark. throw a fucking touchdown real quick. Yeah, it's going to be great. Big skin. Uh, hold up. Uh, is uh, that... I hate... I too hate when people are like, oh, the sports ball mm-hmm, and all this mm-hmm. kind of stuff. It's like, why are you proud of being ignorant of sports? Like, see, that doesn't make any sense see, to me. Like, I, you're being ignorant like, when they're like, stick to gaming or whatever. It's like, no, I'm a, fu- I'm a fucking modern day renaissance man, bruh. And I'm going to fucking tweet about whatever the hell I want to tweet yeah, about. So was, sometimes I'm going to tweet about history. And sometimes I'm going to tweet about Rezo Gun. And sometimes I'm going to tweet about Joe Namath, Greg. And sometimes I'm going to tweet about the French Revolution. And sometimes I'm going to tweet about chemistry. And sometimes I'm going to tweet about Planet Jasper. Mm, yeah, yes. hot heads Planet up Jasper. Planet Jasper. But see, this is what I'm talking about. Is that for you, all that Big makes sense. Marble, I, I've set the idea that if you follow me on Twitter, Ghostbusters and comics and games and m- beer and pizza and wings and Mizzou, and you get all that, right? And so this is something I was thinking about when I was getting all amped up about it. You, this year, have been talking more about soccer than ever. However, you're doing it in a way as your friend that I'm watching your feed. I see the progression, right? You started off, the first tweet I ever saw about it recently was you not understanding the clock. But that this could be a sport that would grow on you. And then your tweet during the American game, I think, was that you, the picture with you and a meatball sub from Ty Root. And it's like, I get all that. I see you coming to the sport, and I know you're a sports guy. It is the people that I know have don't give two shits about sports that are suddenly tweeting the fucking flag logos. Fuck off. <laughs> so I feel like I should address this topic a little bit, and here's why. I am that guy. <laughs> I'm the guy Why you're talking are you about. doing this? So the other day I went out to get a haircut. This very same haircut. It looked good, good by the way. I haven't seen it yet. Thank you. I like the sides. Um, yeah, it's a little short. I'm a little Where'd crazy. you go? You go, you go twos? You I, go got, four, two, three? I don't even know. She does it with uh, scissors so she can oh. justify Ooh. the exorbitant uh, cost of the haircut. Fair enough. She's like, you don't want clippers. You want scissors. And I'm like, it looks exactly the same. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> so on my way, I knew that the um, USA, was it Portugal? That, that was the second. Yeah, the game on Sunday. It was on Sunday, right? I knew the USA. Was it Portugal? <laughs> <laughs> it was Portugal. I just didn't want to get it wrong. I knew this game was happening because I saw it all over Twitter. And I was like, ah, this, I mean, football, great. It's the biggest sport in the world. I wish I was into it. I'm not. Um, on the way from my house to get a coffee first, then my haircut, I got into it. Because I heard the rage, like the excitement from the bar when we scored, when we tied the game. And I was like, oh, wow, that's really interesting. I looked at it, and then all of a sudden, got caught up in the zeitgeist, and I was trying to get people in the salon to like tell me what the score was, and then I heard everyone like yell, scream, when I guess they tied it again. I guess it they was went two, up two to one. It was, it was two to one, and then it was like, oh, we're winning, and then it was like, this, we this, lost with like 10 seconds left. Or which was tied. horrible, and everyone was like, oh, it's horrible. Then I went to bed, and I didn't think about it again until Greg brought it up today, or until I saw the 40 people watching World Cup in our office today while they were again, pretending to but, do work. See, and those people I get because it was like Darren and Pablo and people I know are into soccer. Sean Finnegan. Totally. Sean yeah, Finnegan's exactly. legit Good. into soccer. He also likes hiking. He does it's a lot. Loves so can't hiking. Remember. Can't um, get enough of it. And that all makes sense. I get that. It's just the people who are popping up. And also, I wouldn't, like, you're being honest about it. When I was working in the Tribune in Columbia and that was last time I think there was a, the World Cup. You were thinking of 2006. Is that right? That was two times ago, yeah. That's when you were probably at the Tribune. And yeah, that, was, that makes sense, actually. Yeah. Good job with the math. Uh, <laughs> I went and covered some World Cup party people were throwing and watching in the middle of the day and getting bombed. And I'm interviewing these kids who are like 23. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, we don't know anything. Like, the people who were hosting it knew something and they were cheering. But then they basically just broke up into whatever, cheer for whoever, and they were there to get bombed. And they admitted that. And it was like, more power to you. If you're but throwing a party just to get bombed, great. Don't go on Twitter and act like you can recite the entire roster of Portugal. You know what I mean? Or American. Alright, so herein lies the issue. Uh Right? Herein lies the issue. 2006 was the first World Cup that I actually paid attention to. I used to go to the bar. I was at Northeastern at the time. I used to go to the bar with my friends and watch the game. We we did okay. We didn't get out of the group, I don't think, but we like tied Italy or something. That was like our big victory. And I was like, I've always been interested in it in a national way. Like, we're not good at this game. We're getting better. I'm desperate for us to do well in it because I know it's going to infuriate everyone in the world. That is literally like why I started watching it. Now, I remember the 94 Olympics when it was here. I remember the little dog guy. It was like a big deal. That was like, I, I still think that, um, it was like a little What's dog. What's the dog guy? It was like a little, people, I'm sure I know what I'm talking about. It was like a little dog cartoon. 
that was like the mascot for the 94 World Cup when it was in the United States. And that was like the first time, you know, the, if, you, if it's in your country, you will automatically have a bid. And the U.S. did okay there, whatever. And then the U.S. has just made it every, you know, four years since then. I think that Twitter is part of the reason why this is, seems bigger than ever. Sure. A. And it is bigger than ever because people are obviously watching it. But I think soccer might be turning the corner. Now, there's a few mm. There's a few things that I, I think I'm in complete agreement with you on. This, the people tweeting at us and saying, like, it's football, it's football. Like we said before, in the United States, it will never be football. I'm going to tell you why. Because the biggest sport in the United States is American football. And no one is ever going to stop calling that football. And we can't have two of them. And I'm going to tell you something else, Nick, that I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. The original name for association football was fucking soccer. And guess where it was invented? In Europe. So people should go look at their history and stop telling us that we call it soccer and we're a bunch of assholes when actually the English were calling it soccer first. And we adopted that name. That's number one. I don't know why. Boom. I mean, I believe you. You don't have to tell me that. <laughs> number, I looked it up. I looked it up because I was like, there's no way. Like, there's got to be a more. I like calling be- it soccer because it reminds me of when I used to be an AYSO when I picked daisies out as a fullback because they put me back there. What I was AYZSO? AYSO is American Youth Soccer Organization. Thank you. I used to sit there when I was like 12. We'd go get donuts first. Then I'd sit out there. I literally at some point would like sit down on the field because I was like, I don't want to run anymore. And the ball's way over there. So I'll get up. This girl I used to be with, she used to play soccer when she was a little kid mm-hmm. and she just loved her quote unquote soccer legs she's like yeah it's because i got them soccer legs soccer legs are the that. best things like we, all, we can all agree whether you like soccer or not greg which sounds like you hate it but I, that, and see this is what i'm saying i don't hate the sport i don't enjoy it it's not I, it's one of those things in, in a very colin way if i wanted this is what i was talking about with the the pie chart of your time right if i wanted to commit and actually sit down and learn the rules of soccer i'm sure i could get into it you know what i mean especially what you're talking about like i i know what you're talking about the cheering and like the rise and fall yeah, it's of the, the game. Yeah. Stuff. It's sure. that's different like you don't make like that doesn't make you that guy you're not the guy making the sports ball I mean, jokes. I you're the guy walking down the street getting excited because people are excited people are excited you get caught up in the zeitgeist and it is something i look at it from a positive perspective right where it's another point of pride for america if we do well in this and it really is the final frontier for us because we if we get <laughs> if we get great in soccer, then we're What's next? across the board. There's nothing next. That's it. We were already like amazingly dominant for a very long time. We've lost that, but we were we, we had that you know as far as we're really good in we're really goes. good in virtually every every meaningful sport. And I don't Pretty mean I don't mean disparage sports that are small or whatever. Like, we don't, I don't like, know if we play cricket. Probably not. No, but I mean we like might be a U.S. cricket team, Extreme basketball, cricket. hockey, baseball, obviously American football. We're getting there in soccer, like all of these big sports that actually transcend glo- like you know national lines. But see, that's, we're, we're really good at them. That's the thing for me. That's why I think it's such an important. That's why I'm happy that we're getting bigger. As and by the way, it is a one to one connection that you know the United States is doing well. So everyone in the United States is getting into it. It's it, 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 it drives crazy traffic for every sports site. It does. I mean, it's a cultural phenomenon. So of course you're gonna get that multiplier effect where. Everyone's tweeting about it, so we're going to put more tweets out about it. We heard it the other day, too. Someone actually said in a meeting, they were like, should we do something for this? And we're like, oh, I don't know. About let's, let's back off that because we're video games. But no, um, they did. no, we did it. I know. I was trying to be nice to everyone. But yeah, I know. We did it. What? Why would it be nice to you? Well, it's it was it's a, a good it. point. Like, I mean, it's what you're talking about. It's no, the that's proof true. of what you're pointing. How yeah, can so we I mean, relate our world that traditionally doesn't do much with it to it? Fair enough. So, I mean, that's what everyone is experiencing right now. And it's somewhat capitalistic. <laughs> But it's also, from my perspective, it's again, it's just one more thing I can say. My country does well. Yeah, we're, we're which good. is cool. We're ranked Having like said that, but you know, you guys know my thoughts on when people claim the well, we're doing really well in the World Cup when yeah. they say the we. You just said like, the we. I know, and I don't. I don't like that. I said the we. I don't even like. I mean, I. I that's my one. American. My only big beef with sports fans is they always say like well, we did well today, we played well today, and all this stuff. And I know that that's just a parlance. That's just sort of a way of explaining that unified, all the fans, all the things we, we got into this. But at the same time, I do want people to remember that there are a certain amount of people on that field, and we're not one of them. And so you do have to take a step back and be like, it is just a game. Enjoy it for what it is. I get that. And I think that's also something that uh, everything you just said is some it has it goes back to maybe what the core of this offense is to me. You know what I mean? Is like when I say we about the Chicago Bears or about the Missouri Tigers, I'm saying I can cite back to all these things that I've been a part of for that franchise or for, for you know for that team or this Brad Smith touchdown or this horrible time we lost or you know the fifth down or whatever. I there's something there. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when you you're like, oh yeah, I, it's a point of pride for you as America that we're doing something really good again. It's like coming from Chicago when the White Sox started winning, and people be like, man, your socks are tearing up. I'm like, nope, 
don't know anything about them. Don't know, you know what I mean? Like I go out of my way. Same thing when we talk about football in general, right? Like Colin and Mike Mitchell are fans of respectively the Jets and the 49ers. In a way, I am not a fan of the Bears. You know what I mean? I never want to. I'm never going to fake what I am and I'm not when it comes to sports because that's the kind of thing that will eat you alive, right? Mm-hmm. Like you guys monitor your trade, wa- the waivers and the wires and what's happening uh, in the off season. Yeah, and I'm I usually come into that first Bears game like, all right, who's the team this year? And I start learning from there. You know what I mean? I just don't have the time and that pie chart of time to keep up with it. And the same way like Mizzou football I watch every game try to at least depending on travel but like basketball like people will talk to me about oh man Presti's doing great I'm like I don't well, I mm-hmm. I haven't caught a game in a few weeks <laughs> even when I did it was a passatory glance so that's I think another thing of like when somebody's coming at it honestly hey I'm watching the World Cup this is cool I'm learning who it is well, well, great when all of a sudden like, oh man that, that was a tight pat oh I can't believe you had it fuck off what are you saying <laughs> yeah I mean this is the the thing that I realize is that you know again I think that soccer fans have been a little, you know, because we're talking about the whole football, the whole football to soccer correction or whatever. Again, the etymology of soccer is British, uh, and we were calling it its old name. We still call it that name, so please stop because it's just like a not a name Americans made up. But regardless, um, you know, I've been trying to tweet honestly about it by saying like, you know, the clock doesn't make any sense in, in soccer. I understand that the clock doesn't stop. I understand what stoppage time is and all this kind of stuff. People are explaining to me like, I don't understand that. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. I don't care. Like, yeah. just look at the Portugal U.S. game where there was all these injuries and and just flagrant fucking time taken out of the game, and they put two minutes on the clock at the end. And then there was like much less time in the second half taken off, and they put five minutes on the end of the clock, in which just, we lost the fucking game. Don't so, they arbitrarily just decide how much time they're? It's supposed put to be based end. on like injury time. It's like it's like this whole but, con- but, like, but, but, but it could actually like, that's the point. Time it right. Like, There's supposed to the guy has like, the ref has a clock. We right? have a technology, so he actually physically times. Apparently, but but the technology might let you stop the clock when the ball goes out of bounds, for instance. Or someone's writhing in pain on the ground for five minutes. I want to stop the clock. I mean, that's just an idea. I don't know. Like uh, every other sport in the fucking world. No, <laughs> nonetheless, uh, what I've been... What Seems I've, like every other sport figured out a way around this. Well, I'm done with this, by the way. None, nonetheless, what, I, what I've been trying to honestly don't tweet it about that's is that I've become to really honestly appreciate the sport. Mm-hmm. As I've watched you, because I've been watching other games. No, it's not a just phenomenal games. sport. It's it, amazing. It, it it's, 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 it's incredible athleticism. It's an interesting game. It's a very athletic sport. And I, what I've really come to appreciate is the drama of the sport. It has drama very similar to the NFL. Because it's Italian a very then. similar kind of drama. I've really learned to appreciate. It. Now, soccer is never going to be this thing where I'm going to like pay, ha- have a team. Maybe I'll root a little bit and pa- like it's like I root for the Brooklyn Nets in passing. You know, I don't pretend I'm a Brooklyn Nets fan. I don't watch basketball usually during the year. During the NBA, during the NBA play, I love watching basketball playoffs. And, and you can ask Greg for the few years we lived together. I watch like constantly watch basketball yeah. playoffs because I just like the playoffs because every game is consequential and heavy. But like like Greg was saying, I have to give it to the people that really like and watch basketball. That's their time. And so I try to keep the tweets to a minimum. And I'm doing the same thing with soccer. So I tweet things like, I'm really coming to appreciate the sport. Or man, that loss was really unfortunate. Or I'm eating you know, this like, meatball sub. Or hey, look at this meatball sub and no wonder I'm, I look like I'm pregnant. You know, like. <laughs> So I, I can appreciate the authenticity because I don't often deal with that with my sports because football really does have a passionate fan base of people that tweet about it and stuff like that. Hockey, less so. If you're tweeting about hockey, you really obviously do care about the sport a lot and people do have some meaningful things to tweet about. So I'm going to say tweeting I, about hockey. I can, understand, I can understand what Greg's saying because I feel that for the people that I've been trying to respect actively, the people that really are into soccer, like Greg was saying, by not getting, you know, getting or going over bounds with it. Uh, I've been watching the last two games with Craig Baradon and Ty Root and, and Sin who are real soccer, they're big soccer fans. And I've like I actually said out loud the other day I was like ah oh, it looks like the, this guy wasn't this guy and and I like and I literally said like in the middle of my comment I'm like I really shouldn't be making a comment about this I don't even, <laughs> like I don't I don't understand the game well enough to understand why he's not pressing and I'm looking at it like hockey and it's not an angular sport like that and you know like it's a yeah, spatial yeah. sport and uh, so I'm starting to learn how to appreciate it. now maybe next time around. I understand the sport a little bit better. Maybe I start to pay attention to Major League Soccer a little bit more. Give it, get a, give it a little more time. It's not going to happen. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. It's like Ever there since is Lexi like, Lawless went down. It's all been. Down. I know it's been all fucked up. Uh, so yeah, I I agree with a lot of what Greg's saying. I I do agree that the things that bother me most about the Twitter feed are not necessarily the people that are tweeting about football uh, or soccer rather. Um, because the people that do tweet about soccer, my, I don't follow many people. Like um, our friend James Stevenson in Insomniac, he is a soccer fan. 120%, uh, not, fr- not on my list. You know, uh, Jeff <laughs> Rubenstein, he is a soccer fan. Oh, so, yeah. like, those are the only guys I'm really seeing tweet about it. Yeah, and I so follow, I, and, and See, this is one of those things I follow too many people. Exactly. And, I, and so you're following a bunch of fair weather people. Thing. And this is the whole thing. Now that it happened and I've lost respect for you, if I see it again, gone. So, if I start tweeting tomorrow about it, <laughs> you're going to First off, I'd just be excited you were tweeting. 
because <laughs> it's I so tweet rare. All the time, I just respond to people's tweets. Yeah, follow me on Twitter at but, Nick underscore. But, 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 but the two things, the, the two things that Greg said that I think resonate the most is Americans are going to call football what you call football in Europe and South America and everyone else in the world soccer. That's what we're going to call. It. We're going to call it that forever. So just let it go. Number like, and I'm and I know that's probably deeply offensive to some of you. We have football here. And that's going to be our you sport. You spell color with a U. And, yeah, yeah, and, and we don't, don't, we don't, don't degrade football by having to preface it with American football. But I know, well, that, that's what they call that. it. They call it hand egg. I don't understand because the ball's not... Makes, oh, no. It doesn't even make any sense. Just call it football. No, the, other, the other thing that bothers me is, again, what Greg was saying, and it really does bother me, is like, open your mind up a little bit. If someone's tweeting about something that you don't necessarily like about, and they're not tweeting in excess or whatever, and, and open your mind up. Like, I hate when people say, like, I follow you for games or whatever. I follow, It's like... I don't owe you anything on Twitter. I'm going to tweet about whatever I want. And I hope that you enjoy the fact that I have a broad range of, of, of things that I want to say. I certainly enjoy that when people that I follow tweet about different things. I, enjoy, I like that. It's it makes it, not, it makes it not so monochrome. You know what I mean? Where it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just like, Echo I, yeah, like I don't want to just hear about games. I'm sick of it. Like, I want to hear about other things, you know? Like, and I like them. So I like when people are kind of tweeting a little bit about politics, tweeting a little bit about history or science and, you know. You know, our friend uh, Eric Monticelli at Naughty Dog is always, he's always tweeting about space and, and science. And I really like that. I click on his links. Like, it, it opens your mind up. So, like, stop stop with that. Because that's not only offensive that you think that people owe you something on Twitter, but also mm-hmm. offensive in the sense that, like, we're people that have met many interests and we and try to tweet those things. So that's what I took away from your epic Good. rant about the World Cup. Good. With that said, we're going all the way, Greg. <laughs> oh my god, Team USA, USA. One final USA. pin in this. The thing that people have tweeted me a few times when they'll, I'll tweet the soccer thing, and I apparently said I soccer sucks or whatever in that sport thing. Uh, they tweet this. Have you seen this image they tweet uh, of like American football coaches and then uh, international World Cup coaches? And all the World Cup coaches are in like nice suits, and then the American coaches they've picked for American football are all giant fat slobs. The problem I have with this, number one, is that Rex Ryan's there. He's the only NFL coach in that image, and he's lost a ton of weight, and the rest are collegiate coaches. You don't even know fucking talking about here's the other thing <laughs> here's the other thing for all the ignorant people that are tweeting about these guys in nice suits or whatever you're not allowed to wear suits on the sideline of nfl games anymore or they would people might remember that there was a coach who was mike nolan i think his name was of the niners he wanted to wear a suit like an old school suit and a hat and reebok had to make the suit because they like reebok has a deal where the coaches have to wear their their paraphernalia yeah so like the reason that people american nfl coaches don't dress in suits like they used anymore is because they're not allowed they have to wear their team colors and like the, the things that are branded, those names or whatever. So that also shows a little yep. bit of ignorance. Speaking of all this, though, soccer players are really pretty. Oh, God. It's a lot of really pretty. Yeah, Ronaldo, the Ronaldo I was undressing with my eyes. Like, Looking it's ridiculous. Like, men on the planet. They're molded from clay. Yeah. They are super athletic. I was reading something like the average soccer player runs like, like 10 miles a game or something like that. I was That's like, insane. holy shit. Yeah. It wow. really is an athletic sport. Totally. Now, I'm going to say... I was watching a, a documentary about the U.S. men's team. Uh, Jurgen Klinsmann's the the coach. He played for West he Germany, and, and he was the coach for Germany for a while. He won a World Cup with West Germany in 1990, I think. And he was saying, I always see soccer players are babies, right? Like, they are always have their hands up whenever they get touched. They're always, like, but isn't diving. That, isn't that, that their strategy it seems like to do part that? Of the game. The it is, part. but here's the thing. Apparently, Klinsman was... People were doing it in practice. They practiced at Stanford, and Klinsman was doing the, the People were, like, doing it in practice. And he, like, blew the whistle and was like, yo, like, everyone stop. I don't want to see any of that. And if you watch the American team, they don't do that very often. Like, there's a discipline to it. I think, I think that's, that... The, I mean, that's one thing I would get against the sport, is if I saw an American doing that, he's done. He's, he's dead You wouldn't let him back in the country? No, he'd he's, be done. Uh, stop at the border? It's not what this country's about. It's not about faking an injury. It's about giving it's yourself about a really injury. Around. It's Living about getting a concussion. Comp, yeah, suing about everyone who had anything to do with it. Not being able to remember your daughter's name because you got hit too many times in football. Damn. Not Were you thinking to a Mega Man soccer on the Super Nintendo? Yeah, ball? I had that game. Yeah, it's a good game. It was a great game. I liked that. that Put Gemini Man, Man in the net. <laughs> Nick. Yeah. What's your topic? As I'm unlocking my phone, my topic comes from Twitter. Remember, oh. everyone, if you have a nice topic for us or a fun topic or an interesting topic. Follow me on Twitter at Nick underscore Scarpino and uh, tweet me your questions like, nope, I've been scrolling. <laughs> nope, not at, this guy. At its underscore RJ says, uh, discussion of the day. If your wife told you she did a pornographic film uh, way before she met you, would that affect your relationship? That's my question to you guys. If you found out that your wife or a significant other was in a risque uh, video that other people could find on the internet. She's in the pornography. 
She's in. She's in the porno. Uh, and what, is it hardcore or is it like Skinamax? For the sake of argument, I would say hardcore? it's probably it's it's Let's hardcore. Hard. It's not like fetish or anything like that, but okay. it's it's enough to let everyone know what's going on. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I feel like undoubtedly would affect the relationship. That doesn't necessarily in what mean, way, and it doesn't mean in a good like, way or a bad. Because it could be a good married. way. You're already married. Yeah. I'm just saying for the argument. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it'll it would affect it definitely. Like mm-hmm. it's definitely a conversation you need to have, and it's it's no matter what. I don't think that's a good thing. I don't think anyone's gonna be like, yeah, oh, I was hoping for this one. You know, I think I'd only be disappointed if I if I because you'd have to watch it, right? Well, that's the thing. If would you, you knew it existed, it? would you watch it? Yeah. I feel like I'd have to. Have I'd have to. to. Yeah. I'd be. I'd obsess about it. I'd and, have to watch and it. And that's the worst part, though, is like this whole. I'd have people to. refer to unless this it, as the X Files with Colin, in which case I would absolutely watch it. The X Files are. You would have already watched it. I would have seen it. I would have known about it. I would have tweeted it. <laughs> then I would have tweeted, boom, bam, Colin, my wife making that money. Mm-hmm. But you, it's one of those things where people always act like they don't want to know about the history yeah. of their partner. But then it's like you really do, and it's like even if you don't. There's something that you're just like, See, here, you always ask these questions. This is what I want to rewind to about it. Would it affect the relationship? Of course, anything like this, I think, affects the relationship. But, like, I I don't care. what you Are you clean right now? Are you not going to infect me with anything and, you know, screw up our lives? Well, sure. <laughs> just let me know one day, please. <laughs> uh, then I'm fine with it. But, like, this is, like, that little that step outside of that realm, right? Like, I don't need to know everything you've ever done with another guy or how many guys, blah, 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 blah. I don't care about that as long as everything's checking out now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Everything's you're flying fine, great. Don't worry great. about it. But then you get to this, and it would more be... I, this would be something I would have just wanted to be briefed on. That's so the that trust. I think trust like, is oh, the man. biggest part. And it's crazy. You're, you know, your daughter, <laughs> your wife, you said blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, what now? What? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it, if you had talked to her beforehand and were like, hey, did you ever... Get involved in a pornographic video, I mean, it and she was like, "Come up in a lot of no. conversations." Well, I know, but, but it like, seems like say it did. Like say, sure. No, I feel like that that does come up. Maybe not that specifically, but it's <laughs> just like a porno. No, but not not that. But it's I just mean, like world has it, have they, they ever taken photos of you? Have they exactly? Ever, yeah, yeah. Is there anything? And if they're like, no, there is definitely nothing. And then you later find out there is. That's not good. Yeah, I guess that's true. I've never asked that question though, but because I guess that's just—I mean, I'm I guess this is. Ask my wife that question when I go home. This today. is like that next step out of it all. Yeah, I don't know, but like, see, like if if oh if it turned out that she had posed for a, a, a cell phone photos or sent those out to somebody, and then they popped up on the internet again in like one of those compilation videos that we none of us have ever seen. They make compilation videos. Oh yeah. Oh come on. YouTube? on. <laughs> What? Not, not on YouTube. Oh, yeah. You can't get them on YouTube. YouTube doesn't put that stuff out. There, there are other sites that host <laughs> video content on the internet. Of just photos? No, I just go to like, Tumblr. I like, know what a compilation is. I, no, I watch I'm Vine compilations porn, all the time. compilations, like compilations of something. Oh, but I'm the talking about like, I'm, I'm talking about like, yeah, I'm telling I'm you. talking about like selfies and photos you send your girl. They're, they're seen, yeah, they'll do them. They'll okay, do them fine. if it's like, you know, okay. but they usually bucket them into some sort sure. of like we're down title, the rabbit like hole marketable again. A category. That yeah. that would be such less I mean, unless I'd asked that question, then I really those wouldn't even offend me either. No, we've yeah. all done dumb stuff, you know what I mean? I mean, that's the thing. Exactly. It's just like you can't judge them based on that stuff. I think you yeah. can, and here's why. Have you guys ever seen I'm I'm going to come down the rabbit hole with me. Come I'm come close and come down. In the 90s, there was a movie that was made called Jade. Do you remember this movie at all? I don't. This movie starring Linda Fiorentino and Chaz Palminteri. Made them up. About a woman who was married to a guy. Chaz Palminteri is like a district attorney, I think. Um, and finds out that his wife has been masquerading the entire time of, as like this like... I thought that was going to end differently. No, crazy um, like exotic sex worker slash like dominatrix, right? Cool. And he finds this out about her and it turns out that she, spoilers kills a guy the whole thing's a murder mystery they're trying to figure out whether or not she did it it's hot off the tails of basic instinct you know they were mm. trying to get another movie out like that didn't really catch i don't i don't i don't believe but at the end of the movie he knows his wife did it so he covers it up for her oh. but then he goes at the very last scene and it's kind of an abusive relationship she's oh, not no, being it boo. it's so it's it's a weird psychological thriller kind of thing but he tells her at the end of it he's like hey and the next time we're together in that way like i want to see jade and that was like her moniker when she went out there the point i'm driving at is if i saw it and it was like outrageously amazing i would be like hey what happened why did i get what so happened old? like what happened that's her what? job They're not yeah but like them. but like i don't know like can you can you bring can some of that bring transition over back. yeah you know what? i don't know i'd be a little disappointed that she would like to have that showman showmanship there but didn't feel the need to bring that mm-hmm. into our little um you know 
happy home. I guess I think my first reaction would be that I'd be like, what? And you didn't tell me? But then I'd, I'd eventually come down and just the fact that, well, I never asked. And why do you need to tell me that? Like, you lived a life. You know what I mean? Like, I I'd, you, I'd yeah. get there in the end. I think you'd want to know that. That's that's up there with I used to do hardcore drugs for a while, I think. See, I guess, and this is the other thing about this argument, is, again, it wouldn't even be so much, oh, you did porn, you're gross. It would be so much like... We've, we've been together conceivably X number of years. We're married. We've been married a little bit, maybe mm-hmm. even a oh, short bit. But, like, we were in a committed relationship. We talked about our lives. And this, at no Just point come up. in your timeline of events, was this something yeah. you wanted to bring up to me? Like, why, like I understand it's embarrassing, but you, we tell each other everything. Yeah, yeah, And maybe yeah. I'm just a guy who talks about shitting in a bush in front of his best friend on the internet so Mm -hmm. like everybody just thinks I don't have anything or someone who just enrages soccer fans we're missing the essential question fake soccer fans the essential question is what kind of porn is it Mm. and also the other question is can we hold people that are in our lives to account for things that we were not there for that they were not doing to us no I don't think we can the answer to that is I don't think we can for the sake of argument though let's say it's run of the mill like hardcore hardcore, but not like crazy the kind of stuff so that you type one, in like five words yeah. is it is it a porn or is it a sex tape that his tweet does not uh it's a porn it's a per, it's a per- that. It's again, when you've been I'm saying it's, it's a, a, what i needed i needed money no. i wanted to do this thing it's a i got paid to do this job is sex, it a sex tape no sex, nothing no sex tape's a was step that, down from yeah i think i think of it's like even, offenses like i was saying right like mm-hmm. A Everyone selfie does that shit. Photo, yeah, whatever. S- sex tape. No, you know, see, sex tape's on the. No, to me, sex tape is completely, completely in a different category. Like if 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 my wife and or significant other uh, were to come to me and say, "Hey, there's this is out there. It's floating around," I'd be like, "I mean, good for you. You you did it. You knew what the ramifications were, but that probably built into the sort of hotness of it in the moment." It's different than saying like I have an agent. My agent yeah, called me, yeah, yeah, and yeah. now I'm going to go to this shoot. I've never met this guy See, before, I, and got it. We're Nick get nails down. it because again, this is the, I'm talking about the timeline <laughs> of your life. It. Nick's wife nailed it. At Not some, your real wife, your hypothetical wife. Yeah. Well, <laughs> at some time you know, in the I haven't asked her this question. I'm going to go home tonight and see what she says. <laughs> at some point in the timeline, <laughs> have you done porno? <laughs> <laughs> at some point in the timeline, if you're a professional pornography star, actress, whatever, that starlet, I think, starlet, thank you. Yes. That comes up in conversation. I think. Otherwise, you're covering up, I would imagine, years of your life, a year or more, or what you did for, you know, and you're talking about your life and what we've done. A sex tape? No way. Mm-hmm. Because that goes back to the whole photos of somebody. Somebody takes photos of you while you guys yeah, are having that's, sex. That's every day. That's yeah, every day. That's every day. Like, that's the problem. You can't really lament on that because let's guess what? Chances are, if you get married like five, ten years from now, they all have sex tapes out there. Someone at some point has well, probably filmed. Them I mean, I think the something. big difference there is the internet, though. Like, like I looked at my back watch day, for the annual calendar. Like ten years from <laughs> five now. Five years from now. Look at this. Like back in the day, sex tapes and porn were different things. It was just like I'm literally the only person that can see the sex tape. But nowadays, it's like if you go to a porn website, which now are just not like before. There was a lot of them. Now it's just it's YouTube. Like, you just fucking upload something. Yeah, it's amazing. And it's just like, it's the sex tapes are right next to the porn, and it's almost like... Yeah, but then they do the thing where they're like, it's a sex tape, and you're like... No, but then you click on it, and you look at it, and it's lit, and it's a a porn star, and you're like, that's not a... Well, it's like Bang Bus. It's a sex tape. Are sex tapes a sex tape slot on YouTube? There's no, 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 YouTube. no, 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 YouTube. no, no You said YouTube. YouTube. Where did you say Red No, the YouTube style. It's like YouTube. Sorry. There's like Thank a million you. of Thank them. You. I'll be quiet now. Channels, people having now, profiles. Now, let me, let me boil it down even further to its its essence. This all comes back to, I think, a, a really important point in relationships, which, which is um, don't ask questions you don't want the answers to. Mm-hmm. And this was a, a conversation I've had with women in the past where it's like, you know, like, I am not a jealous person at all. Like, like there was a time when I was younger when I was. And you learn lessons from that because it's like you kind of obsess over this stupid shit and like what are they doing and who are they with? And it's like who fucking cares? Like if, if the woman or the man you're with is like to be trusted and you want to be with them and you care about them, just let them go and right. let them do their thing. Because mm-hmm. if they're cheating on you or doing messed up things to you, then they're not for you anyway. So these kinds of things answer the questions for you. But I never asked the questions even with, you know, I've never really gotten into it with my girlfriend now. I've been with, with for years and I, I assume I'm going to marry where it's like how many guys have you been with then? Like all this stuff, it's like well, I don't, I, I don't want to fucking know. I don't care. It's your business, yeah. And like, if you that's something you feel you need to tell me, that's fine. But like, I'm not gonna offer up that stuff to you just out of nowhere. If you, but if you want to ask, like you, I'm gonna tell you the answer. See, I mean, that's that's and, the other side of that though. Is like, I, I agree with you. Where it's like you should not ask those questions. You're just gonna get hurt. Having said that, it's really hard not to ask those questions when. For a lot of people, yeah. But as for you, you get, as you get for twenty four, exactly. You know, there you go. Young as, exactly. As you get older, it doesn't matter anymore. But, but so that's the told. thing, though. It's like if you do ask the questions, you better be honest about the answers. Like, no, I think but that's the more important. You, so, like for me, and this is not for everyone, but like 
as you get older and as you have a lot of these ex- not porno but as you get older and you have experiences that uh you know help shape who you are in, you know for the rest of your life you sort of just assume everyone else has those like mm-hmm. for me it's never been a question i don't even, i don't care how many uh, men my wife's been with beforehand um i hope it they were all good experiences good for her <laughs> you know and i hope she had as many as she thought she needed before she got to me because she certainly have the time <laughs> of your <life. laughs> nick looking out a window with the green day song playing behind him with naked um, dudes that your girl <laughs> that your wife slept with this walking guy with by. a camera i'm like no get the camera out of there it's not, it's not session. It's yeah like it, all that stuff seems so much more uh exaggerated when you're younger right mm-hmm. when you're like 16 and this is the first girl you've ever like had an intimate contact with and you're like i want to just own this and like i want to own you this. know what i mean like this is mine this i don't ever want anyone else to experience this because it's so amazing and then you know after a while you you lose the connection to the physical connection so to speak and it's more about just the companionship and making sure each other's needs are met and making sure that um basically each other everyone's happy and it doesn't really matter what came before at least it shouldn't in my opinion mm-hmm. i don't i don't think it it shouldn't matter unless there was something that needs to be dealt with, like, you know, I wouldn't a be disease upset. or a, yeah, exactly. a, a baby like or something, that, right? Where it's I like, oh, by be... the way, I was, I have a kid, and you're like, oh, well, my summation of w- this rambling thing I've been trying to put together is, I'm not offended that you did pornography. I'm just, it's weird that you didn't tell me. We sorry, had this. I'm sorry. I love that you just looked at me straight in the eye as you said, "I love right there." Well, I feel like I'm. The, you're the one I'm trying. It's your topic. So I'm How many people do you think are going to tie Tim Gettys? Sounds like a Tim topic. Sounds like a Tim topic. Yeah, it is. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, it's not that I care that you Your did hands porno. Are so warm. I really hot. Uh, yeah, I was just wanted, why, why when we were breaking down, like, oh yeah, and then I worked at the newspaper for a year and a half, and then I came to IGN, like, hey Greg, why didn't you mention that porno you did for a year and yeah. a half in the middle of it all? God, yeah, it's weird. To me, it's just One like movie. I just try to keep it all in the context of like maybe it's from past experiences where like you just get too caught up, you get it's codependent, it's all these things that you don't want to be, and uh, to me, it's just like it comes with experience. It really does. It does. Um, to just be like, I don't care. Whoa. It's not even that I don't want to know. It's like I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, you know, no, I'm just like whatever. Like if you care about my shit, that's cool. I'm not gonna sac- like offer up that information for you if you really, unless you really want to know. If you really want to know, I'm gonna really tell you. You know, mm-hmm. and then you're not really gonna want to know. I anymore. like how sometimes when you make the point, you squint up and you kind of look like Robert De Niro. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Robert De Niro. Is that an anti-Italian? Thing? You, you, anti-Italian? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's very pro-Italian. I wish oh. I, I wish I did that. It's I just wish Italian. Like, I, I it's I not like, anti or pro. It's just Italian. It's just an Italian. <laughs> so anyway, that's where I stand on it. It's just like you, you know, on, there's a place for honesty. I guess the answer to the specific question, Tim, is uh, no. It wouldn't matter. <laughs> Again, not my topic. Just sounds like yeah, my topic. Yeah, but everyone just assumes that it's about having sex <laughs> oh, with a Disney princess. It's your Tim, topic. That was, that was your topic? That was Nick's topic. That was my topic. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's cool. Like totally sounds, sounds like a Tim topic. And then what was your summation of it all? My summation of it all is just... Hold on. Let me think back to the original question. Which was... Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it would affect it. I, I think it's, as much as I want to say it wouldn't, it definitely would. I think it would just be more of a... Could you get me on Let's talk it? about it. Yeah, yeah 100%. Okay. 100,000%. Yeah. I think I'm with Colin. I'd be, I, I don't think it would matter to me one way or the other i would wonder why during that like disclosure period where you're thinking about marrying one another that didn't, that come, up. didn't come up i mean see what my thing doing? is knowing me i would have asked about it and see I would given never, the story the she would have said she I she would have told me to it didn't ask. happen i wouldn't think to ask because you can't like and, and then like you can't use the argument well you didn't ask because it's like who would ask if you've ever done a porn but a that's the, I, w- I would never ask that but film. i would ask like is there anything of a sexual variety that i should know about you know like, would like, ask that? Yeah, that can mean anything. I'd ask something of that. Yeah, to, but to, yeah. to some people, like that's the thing. Like, like there's a bunch of people going around right now, you know, <laughs> snap, <laughs> Snapchatting each other's yes. genitalia all over the place, and like those pictures are out there, but pe- people don't care. They don't see. It doesn't seem to be bothering anyone. So, that's like, the other thing too. Five like, years from now, exactly. someone's gonna be like, "Did you send any, you know, oh, yeah, all the time. penis pictures to other people?" You'd be like, "Yeah, didn't you?" Like, it's not gonna be penis the pictures. I was going to say dick pics. Old. I know you are going to say dick pics. And I like that you did it. You just said penis pictures. Dick pics or penis pictures. In 10 years, hey, yeah, it'll be a different landscape where <laughs> this will be an antiquated conversation. See, I don't yeah. even know if it's 10 years. Like, I feel like we're in that now. I think it's now. Everyone's just sending, like, it's, but I mean, there's the- so much of this. And it's like, I think that now it's less of a um, a bad thing that, like, you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing. And it's just more like, I don't think it's that crazy to be like, hey, is there stuff out there I should know about? Because there's definitely stuff out there. And it's I like, mean, I think that's the problem. What's that- the extent of it? That's the is thing. really the question. Okay. Yeah, and, and and how much is it going to come back to damage anything that we exactly? It's together. just like it's like the way I see it with this modern internet. It's like I would want to know what's out there, 
in you order to... take that one? You want me to take it? Go this for it. This modern internet yeah. is like that. Greg has to... Every time you say... <laughs> Instead of the old-timey 1920s internet. <laughs> no, it's totally different. different. No, yeah, it's true. It's very true. No, I mean, like, it's, fa- it's, so it's different faster than it used and to be. seemingly more vast now, and right? You, it's, it's just so much so out easy. there. So easy. I want to know what's out there because that reflects on her that reflects on me mm-hmm. like all this is just, just like i want to at least know that but see i also have, i'm of the mind that like i don't know i mean you you asked me 10 years ago would that if something like that leaked would that like destroy someone and i would have said absolutely but then you see these women who have become empires because of their sex tapes right yeah, like that's, it, let's that's not forget kim kardashian was nothing she was nothing. She wasn't nothing. She was a. She was in prime of, position to become something. She was from a friend that. of Paris Hilton. Great. She was a Hollywood socialite, quote unquote, whatever that's worth, whatever that means. She does a sex tape. By all means, should have ruined her reputation around town, and she becomes five years, six years, seven years later, a mega empire. Like, I just don't think. It, I think people are just interested in whatever is uh sort of risque now they like every it, it's always been that way right like everyone's lives are, i mean we just find uh risque topics or polarizing topics fascinating we're just we're just drawn to them and whether they're good or not the actually some of them that are terrible are even better because then we have more to talk about right mm-hmm. in our lives like water cooler chat and that's all kim kardashian is. she's built a freaking uh, million million dollar empire multi-million dollar empire on it. more power to her yeah. i guess tim yes What's your topic? So my topic is what websites do you visit every day? Because I got a bunch of them. Does Twitter count? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Twitter. I feel like the social media, for me at least, goes without saying. Twitter, sure. Facebook. I don't see I don't really Facebook that much. See, I, I've are... explained this before. My Facebook's my for my friends. Like my real life people that I know. Is that what you do? Because I just started, like any, everyone, I was like, go for it. Why not? Because yeah, I never post I on Facebook, okay. so it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I just don't do that. Like but the only time I ever post when, when I, I want to everyone page, to know yeah, about it's something. just promoting content, but since it has a longer tail, I usually just leave it up longer. Well, it's different, like for the fan page thing. But I'm talking about I well, have my personal Facebook, Facebook. I never update my Facebook I profile. It's, I don't update it pretty much ever, but I use it to keep up with my friends mm-hmm. from college and from yeah, middle like, school and stuff just, and see what they're doing and like who's dating who and how fat did he get and stuff like that. How fat did he get? I think again, pretty fat. I think that's another like thing that's a sign of our different generations. Is that I just at this point in my life. I, I went through that where I'm like, oh, what does she look like? What does he look like? What's he doing now? Now I just don't care. Now we have this empire that we're building. <laughs> this is our sex tape empire. Yes. We're like, we've already done the sex tape. We're just waiting for the money to roll in. Ascend. Now that we've got this, What if this, we all did a sex tape matter. together? Let's do it. Will that, uh, get, us, will that get us fame hmm. and money? I don't think so. So wait, real quick about that. <laughs> I had this idea. <laughs> <laughs> Similar. So you know how like all the pretty... Like cosplay girls and stuff, they do the sexy like pinup posters and sell them. Mm-hmm. Never. I want to do that for us. Yeah. Like we a, should like, each sell. You, are are we in like bathing suits? We're in like the sexy cosplay stuff. Yeah, sure. I'm in. Yeah. Totally. In, individual posters of us. The what is Colin, what does Colin get to be? That's three months. Colin time. gets to be whatever he wants. Mega Man. Rock Man. Zero no, suit it, Samus. We gotta call him Rock Man. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. You gotta go back to the origin. Um, so we're doing sexy versions of just nerdy things. Yeah. And male characters or female characters or it doesn't matter. It's up to whatever you want it to be. Whatever you want. I want to be sexy Yoshi. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I want you to do that. I will make that costume for you. It's nasty. Where's the egg going to come out of? You can just ingest it. Well, I, You'll I mean, find it's, out. It's not, a, it's not a video. It'll just be the egg behind me already. I mean, we have to I'll be paper. Can you just tongues out? No, I and want my tongue going egg. off the side of the oh. counter so you don't know what I'm grabbing. Oh, man. <laughs> what, <laughs> what would you be in the sexy cosplay? I don't know. Don't, don't give them what, all away. Yeah, this is, Everybody tell us in the comments what you want us to be in our second. I want you to be GoldenEye James Bond. Oh, that's so good. Can but Sean I want to do that. And then, the thing? Oh, yes. When uh, you flip then, the page, no. I want to be Odd Job. also. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like that. Can it be Websites like your backside, though? Every day. <sighs> yeah. Uh, IGN, which sounds like a cop-out, but I still go every Seriously, day. Seriously, no, happening. Every single day. A lot of time for comics. I stopped reading that site like six years ago. Um. So now I'm gonna. Get, so Twitter, IGN, clearly, duh. Facebook, no. I get, I go to Facebook every so often. Um. Here's embarrassing. Maybe I don't know, but a, ch- a site I check every day. Text from last night. Still on the train every day. I, it's an easy mobile refresh. I read the one page. Are of they the real? I like to think they are, but there's no way to prove it. Because you just go to their website and you write the text mm-hmm. that it was. So I like to think they're real. They're all. They're. They're. You know. They're always about Tinder nowadays or whatever. Yeah. And it's just like, all right, that's fun. Mm-hmm. Stupid stuff like that. Reddit, Reddit, definitely. Uh, See, I, I, I've been making more of a point to 
make Reddit like the first thing I look at, like and and check back in the day. And I have now gained an appreciation for Reddit. Before I was like this, I don't like the the way it looks. Yeah. I can't navigate this. It doesn't make any sense to me. I'm too old for this. My, my hip hurts. I gotta have a replacement. <laughs> this wasn't like this in my old. Uh, I remember the old internet, internet <laughs> days, everybody. Where's you had the DSL. <laughs> um, but now that now that I've been looking, and now that you know, I think Reddit's all about finding sort of your subreddit that you like, right? Mm-hmm. Or a couple mm-hmm. subreddits. And now that Sean Finnegan sort of showed me the movie subreddit and like some of the things in there, I'm like, oh, this is actually really cool. And there's some really good discussions that are happening in there. Do you subscribe so, to the Game Over Greggy subreddit? Uh, no. Everybody should. Is there a game That's over? A thing? One? We don't run it. There's a fan who keeps a game over Greggy subreddit going. He posts I thought you were kidding. Every day when you, we post the video at midnight, he goes and puts it in the game over ready. That's bad. Thank you for that. Shout out hey, to you. Hey, we owe you. For something. the record, nobody goes and comments, so you should all go at least say hi and thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I'm gonna go tomorrow if I remember, um, which I probably won't. I'll but, add it to your phone. Yeah, add it to my phone. Um, but I want to make Reddit a daily thing for me because I just think there's a lot of interesting discussions happening there. Plus, it's how a lot of people discover everything, right? See, see all my, my daily internet traffic is really on the Muni, like what I'm reading. So that text mm-hmm. from last night and the Reddit, and like that's where I count and catch up on everything. And Reddit for me, I yeah, was the same way where there's the infamous Greg Miller Dead Space 2 review, mm-hmm. which was legitimately the first time I ever heard about Reddit when Bromley's like, your review's still on the front page of Reddit. It has a million comments. And I was like, what's Reddit? And then I went there, commented, then talked to kids through blogs and emails and yada, yada, yada. But after that, I didn't touch it for a long, long time. And then, yeah, it was something I was looking for something to do on the train years ago now. And it was, I opened it up. And then once you get into a rhythm of checking it and see mm-hmm. how it yeah, works, it becomes like, your, oh, okay, I get this. This right. is cool. See, I'm, I'm still trying to get to that, um, which I missed Dig completely. Oh, yeah. Dig, Dig kind of came, came and went. And went. I was like, what's Dig? And then everyone's like, it's the best thing. And then I was like, literally overnight, I went to check it. And then everyone's like, no, Dig's not the cool thing anymore. Reddit's the thing now. Mm. And Reddit's actually had... I mean, it's been popular for years now at this point, right? So I'm yeah. looking at, I'm no, looking at Tim to validate awesome. this because I don't know. It's super awesome. Um, for me, it's this is embarrassing to say. Superficial, I know it. It's the superficial. Yeah, yeah, check yeah. That superficial and it's everything. the superficial because the guy just He's funny. continues to astound me with his writing. He's such he just his his perspective on these issues is so uniquely him. Yeah. That I find him fascinating, and I know it's a guy because no one would make that many penis jokes if it were a female. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Superficial is a weird sight, though. It's really Because, like, it's one of those things where I think... Yeah, Christine used to look at it a mm-hmm. lot. I think she still is a little bit. But you go there, and it's, like, just a weird mix of, like... It's girls in bikinis, but that's... It's not... The story isn't about them, necessarily, in no, bikinis. No, he just There's does like that because he's smart. Like, he's, like, the Tim Gettys of the future. Well, he's now. Yeah. Tim Gettys, he, the Tim Gettys is, like, the superficial of the future. Well, when Tim runs his own site, it'll be the superficial, because the headline will be really grabbing. Mm-hmm. Then it'll be... Five pictures of a girl in a bikini. Then the body of it will be about something that's related to the headline, but not the bikinis. Yep. And underneath it, it'll be related videos of bikini, like pictures of bikini mm. girls. Smart. And <laughs> Strategy. It, yeah, it keeps me coming back. Um, I also, you got me uh, hooked on Tube Filter. Oh, yeah. Is, tube yeah, Filter Which good. is pretty amazing. Uh, I get a lot of YouTube news that way. Yeah. What about New Media Rockstars? Are you still checking that every well, day? They changed owners and things out a little weird. They're yeah. still cool. That was the thing. When you told me about them back in the day, I went and checked it, and then they were going through the change, so they kind of stopped posting. Yeah. And so then I got out of the rhythm, and now I've, yeah. I, somebody linked me to something today, and I was watching it on there. I was like, oh, yeah, it's back. They're, they're really different. It's, it's still good. It's not as good as it was, but mm. Tube Filter kind of like picked it up there, and like Tube Filter is, the, I think, the better. What about the BuzzFeed? Okay. Well, BuzzFeed. I, so I check BuzzFeed every day, but I never, I never go to BuzzFeed. I always like get linked off from Twitter. Something, yeah. That's my thing. I don't actually, a lot of the websites I used to go to all the time, like BuzzFeed and uh, mm-hmm. Mashable and things like that. Yeah. I just follow them on Twitter and I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting, interesting. and I go from there. So that Twitter's kind of a good hub. Yeah. Is, tw- is yeah. Twitter so your starting things. ground for everything? Twitter, Twitter is definitely like a good jump off point. There's a couple sites that I visit every day just from when I was younger that I just keep doing, like q5.com my favorite music artist. I check their forums every day. Um, Cybertron.com. It's S E I. It's a Transformers fan site. Sick. And I was like keeping up to seeing all the new toys and shit. And like Karaka uh, Kashab po- yeah, posted a lot of exactly. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I exactly all these things. My my name is Karaka Kashk on all of them, including the Cuban Five Boards. Awesome. Did you see that somebody wanted that to be the world? What we renamed the Earth. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I like that a Boom, lot. Change it, change it right now. And then there's Karaka certain things Kashk. that I ch- check every day for no reason. It's just like muscle memory, like MacRumors.com. I'm not in the. I'm not buying a Mac. That's so I don't weird. even really like Apple that much. Do you do that's but, weird. What really do, weird. Now, do you have actually oh. like uh, bookmarks on your home on yeah, your home screen? Yeah, so I have my little the two ball tool yeah. toolbar thingy mm-hmm. with a bunch of icons that are super organized. Oh, Rooster Teeth. That's the one. I go to Rooster Teeth multiple times a day just to see what the fuck's going on. Yeah, we ha- we haven't mentioned YouTube. 
Oh, I'm on YouTube all the time. I, yeah. I know it's like it's a utility you forget about it, but I I now go to the thing where it's you know default opens to our stuff, mm -hmm. and I use that as a jump off to see what my subs are doing. And see, what's funny? I'm obviously I'm crazy about YouTube. If you guys didn't know this, I have multiple things going to YouTube. One goes to this. One goes to IGN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One goes to my personal thing, and I make sure that my personal thing's not logged in. So that I get the whole what other people are watching and what you should watch. So I see the YouTube homepage from a non-logged in ah, okay. thing because I want to know what everyone else is talking about. That's smart. Keeping me cool. So Keeping I can make you it. cool too, Nick. That's why I, we have you. Mm -hmm. You're tall. You're youthful. Mm -hmm. You're in the know. Colin, what are some of your... I mean, I know the, the big one. Drudge Report. Drudge Report. Oh, yeah. Every day begins and ends with Drudge Report. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I mean, I would say my, like, so when I'm on my phone, it's Twitter and the AP. The AP app is really good, mm -hmm. and you can separate into like world news or U.S. news or by state or sports and stuff. So that's great. And a lot of people ask me like, how do you get un unbiased, non-political news? You go to the AP or Reuters; they're pretty good. But in terms of websites that I go to every day, I start every day with Drudge Report. Drudge Report is an aggregate, a political aggregate, the biggest political aggregate in the world, um, and uh, it's it's essentially a conservative website that makes fun of a lot of things that are going on with liberals, and so it's. It's a, a little bit mean spirited sometimes, but it's also really funny, and it's also it's Drudge Report. So. It's also really topical. The guy's name is Matt Drudge, um, and Drudge Report hasn't changed designs in 15 years, so it still looks really old. It, it's kind of, like that. totally intentional. Like, guy doesn't give a fuck. He makes millions of dollars a year off this website. He does not care. Like that is, and he's just a recluse. The guy that runs it, like no one's seen him in a long time and stuff. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> and uh, his big story was that he was the one who broke the Monica Lewinsky scandal. So that's how Drudge Report came. out. Interesting. Um, and that was before the, anyone was breaking anything on the internet. So he was like really a pioneer at the time. And then I go to a, a, a really good political blog called Hot Air, uh, which is like a more paleo con um, slanted uh, political blog. That's excellent. I read that multiple times a day. And then I go look for video content. I like Morning Joe on MSNBC a lot. It's the morning show with Joe Scarborough. Mm -hmm. So during lunch at work, I always watch the first 20 minutes of it or whatever at work. Um, and at Real Clear Politics is another website that has great video. Like they'll clip out things people said on C-SPAN or things that you'll just have missed, like uh, from the last day. Mm -hmm. And then as far as sports are concerned, I go to um, also well, I go to Politico a lot too, which is yeah. a really good website. Um, and then as far as sports are concerned, I go to ESPN multiple times a day. Um, I go to a website that I'm really fond of for the Islanders called the Lighthouse Hockey. Um, that's an SB Nation website. Um, they're excellent. I'm friends with them on Twitter, and and they're that's a really really good website. Um, Jets blog I go to, um, but like how Grant these Land. are a lot of blogs. So how many? How I often go to these every day. Do you? But like, what percentage of your day do you guys spend consuming content that is either that, that is indirectly related to what you your job? Like I'm not saying like IGN we have to read because a we have to we're fans, but we also are putting work up there so we have to make sure it's displayed properly and mm -hmm. is like doing what we need to do. But like what. Like, do you take every hour? You take five minutes to read these blogs? Because, ah, Tim, you're always really in the know, and so are you, Greg. You, like, you guys always seem to me like you're so much better versed on every topic than I am. Well, I mean, that's only in terms of this stuff. Every, Literally everything else in the world besides internet video, I think Colin is the well-versed well, one. Just, oh, yeah, we know playing that. to your strengths. That's what he's talking about. Like, it, the way, it's the same thing for me. I'm like, why I'm versed in comics or whatever mm -hmm. the way I am. Even though I don't read everything in comics anymore, it's because I follow comic people on Twitter. Right. So they get up a link, I hit the most important thing, I'm back out, I'm back to what I'm doing, right? Yeah. Like, you jump mm -hmm. in, you see the video, whatever you need to do about that. See, I guess I do that, but... I don't know. I think I get it vicariously through because I follow all of you guys on Twitter, so I get it vicariously through all of you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. If it's important enough for me to read, one of you will retweet it. I mean, that's, my thing is with I really love internet video, and there's sites like Devour and Geekology Do you still read and Devour? Awesomer, which I honestly don't consume their content that much anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just more of a time thing because I just don't have time to do that. Right. But I do look at them every day just to see what's up, what they're curating because those are guys that just curate videos that everyone else has made. They're like, hey, these are cool things. And um, I've slowly just kind of like gone away from that. I think the internet video as a whole has kind of shifted and got way more like these are all sponsored videos mm -hmm. and like people are making money from it. So a lot of the just like fun, dumb things are kind of, it's kind of over. It's disappearing. Like, yeah. yeah. And it's, that's not necessarily a bad thing. There's some bad parts to it, but. Um, well, it's becoming it's because it's becoming more legitimized, right? Exactly. It's as 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 the ad dollars are coming over from television to online, rightfully so, because online's a better medium, in my opinion. Um, not you know, true true detective, notwithstanding uh, and things like that. But uh, for the most part, people are getting more savvy at it. They've been at it for years now. Mm -hmm. This the is not like YouTube is starting to erode, and it's right. used to becoming mainstream. There are guys exactly. like us who are taking their professional lives and bringing it on to what they love to do at night. No, we're and still so, we're still. 
Look at this place. The thing it's not even Sorry, about Empire. selling out though. It's about you know getting paid money to do, do what, what you, you love. What, do what you love and then give back and do all that stuff. So in that sense, I've stopped looking at them those sites so much because sites like Tube Filter that are legitimized things are presenting me with the like what's going on and right. all that stuff. Yeah, it's funny. Like we always talk about like you know. We're going to VidCon this weekend. People, yeah. people, Woo! people will Woo! see this VidCon. the weekend after. And I've Sorry, never been to VidCon. And what's funny is that, like, and then we're going to RTX. Woo! Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. I, I love Part video of. games, and I write about video games, and I, we do internet video, and I'm really passionate about doing it with you guys and stuff like that. But I know very little about internet video, and so it's funny mm-hmm. for me to like go to these things and kind of learn firsthand because I don't like go to YouTube and like, what am I going to watch today? I like 95% of the time I go to YouTube. I'm like, I want to watch a music video that I already know exists. (laughs) You know, like that's basically 95% of the population. That's basically what I do. And like, I I read a surprising little about like, I don't read video about video games really. Like I, like I get a gaff though. Yeah. I read, I read gaff, which I think is a a really, I I think a really good form because a lot like, um, I don't go to like, uh, they're good websites, but I don't go to Kotaku or joystick or whatever. I just don't read these websites. So I go to Kotaku every day. See, so I get to, links to like Polygon a lot or Kotaku or what you know. What the, I go to people, I follow those writers, and then they'll put up something I want to see, and I click on. Yeah, it. Yeah, see, like, I don't follow anyone page. from the gaming industry except for like the people we work with. So yeah, Ga- like I think Gaff's actually. I don't post on Gaff. I don't think they'd want me to post there, but like it's. Uh, I like reading it because it's usually like that. Sh- like something will happen, and it's there, and so right. like it, it negates the reason for you to read those the gaming websites. I guess that's what I'm saying. Like I used to start my day out a few years ago where it was like I'd go to a lot of different gaming websites to keep up. Um, now you know that's basically like the drudge report of video games so it's like you can just find everything and if you're not satiated then i guess you can move on but like i'm more about using ign itself as like my my medium to find out about games and it's the same way like why i go to espn or grantland um for sports it's like i'm not going to fox sports and then cbs sports and then yeah, yeah. you know da 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 i'm like i'm go or i i go to deadspin a lot because deadspin's just fucking hilarious but other than that i don't know if you guys read that blog it's a sport yeah, it's kotaku it's in the same family as Kotaku, but it's their sports blog. It is fucking heinous. Like, it is so good. So you're saying, oh, it's good. Yeah, it's so like, funny, well, dude. They, like, they, really they, they, super they, awesome scoop, recently. they scoop, like, crazy shit over how there, they, How do they do that? They pay people. Like, they're the ones that Brett Favre's, like, dick pics and all that kind of stuff that yeah. he was taking and sending to, like, the masseuses when he was on the Jets. Yeah, good like, man. they broke that story. That was, like, a huge... They break, like, all these stories. So. so, basically... So, that's how you break stories, right? Is that you just have a, a network of people that will just... You, you buy content from? Is that how it works? Presumably. There was a really good interview with the guy that runs Deadspin. Where he makes a ton of money and he's just pretty candid about it. He's just like, we, you know, he, they break stories. Like, they're totally legit. But I guess what I'm saying is, like, a lot of these aggregate websites have really helped me narrow down the list of websites I used to go to. I think when I was in college, I would go, I would spend so many fucking time, so much time on like, yeah, all these websites. Because, yeah. like, so, like, NeoGAF, even though I don't post there, um, you know, you just read it a few times a day, and you're like, "Well, this is everything on the front page. Everything that matters. Yeah, is like is already here, and then I don't have to click on all these different websites, and I'm just not reading that much about games because a lot of the stuff I'm reading about at these different websites, I don't care about anyway. I mm-hmm. care about the things that I care about with games, and so po- politics, I'm a little broader with, especially now that the midterms are coming up, where I want to read a lot about that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. But I would still say like. Twitter, like Tim was saying, is a great aggregate too of like you know getting what you need. But see, it doesn't help for me though because I follow like like people like emergency kittens and like <laughs> richaholics where all they do the is tweet richaholics oh it's the best it's a twitter feed of a guy that's just like it's just pictures of like exorbitantly rich things <laughs> he'll have like five rolexes he'll just be like on on all of his arms with like a stack yeah. of money in front of it and like see i've stopped following people like that, that i gotta do stop just that stuff because then i you miss the, good, the real well, stuff not only that well yeah you do but also that's what buzzfeed and mashable and all those things are for they will just give me the threads and it'll just say 24 ridiculously expensive things and if i want to watch like look at that i'll click on that one thread yeah but this is the best because this guy just randomly tweets like twice a day where it'll just be like like he tweeted out a like cartel style stack of money yeah but just to do with an expensive watch like looking at the time the same guy in all the pictures or he just I who no, it's I mean because people just send it. Back pictures. in the day when Instagram was first starting, there was this guy that just I remember this guy. Vaguely. He would just take pictures of himself. Weird little uh, like, I remember that guy. Little dude. And he would just take pictures of him with ridiculous cars, ridiculous girls, ridiculous just everything. It was I'll awesome. Genius. Yeah. But there was one website that I forgot to bring up, and I can't believe I forgot this. It's probably the best website in the entire world. And that's the Chive. Oh, the Chive, yeah. I but that, that, I mean, that's website. kind of borderline porno. It's not, so here's the thing. First off, no. Second off, they also post a lot of really good things, and they curate a bunch of funny videos, too. And they their sense of humor is so spot on that, like, if they post a video, it's going to be good. You know, BuzzFeed and all them, they're making money. They're doing right. their thing. The Chive still has this, like, 
thing about it where they're just like, no. Only if, the best of the best. Well, yeah, that reminds exactly. me of the, I used to get linked a lot to The Onion. Onion, yes. Because they do a lot of really, I mean, they're just, they they were genius back in the day. I haven't watched they're The Onion really video funny. forever. I'm not crazy about satire. Really, like I remember when the they Onion well, was. I remember though. when the Onion was a printed newspaper. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is how old we are. A lot of people is probably don't even still? know this. I mean, it probably is, but okay. it was only it like it was yeah, only yeah, a thing yeah. that was like in your school library or your local library, like when I, in like the late '90s, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And uh, even then, I was like, I don't know. I'm just not. I just don't care about. I liked satire. it then, but the problem like, was that I fell on the hole. It's hold. good. I liked it so much that I started checking the site all the time, and then I got oversaturated. So mm-hmm. now it's like when something awesome gets made on the Onion, and I get to link to it, whether it be video or a thing, then it's really funny, and then I don't. I make a point not to click around. Mm-hmm. They should That's just post it. like once one piece of content a day, Monday through Friday. And then tell us about their awesome Pro- T-shirts. <laughs> I, Recently, I they they made a new website called ClickHole. See where I went there? That's yeah, they're making fun of BuzzFeed. It's also really funny. And it's too. one of those things where when I first heard it, I was like, oh, I hate this idea. This is this is Wait, this what is ClickHole. Click hole. Click it's hole. them making fun of BuzzFeed. <laughs> it's so smart and so genius. Like when I first read about it, are you looking it up right now? No, I want to. I'm gonna. I just retweeted one from Marty the other day. The I I, I won't even spoil it. I would like if you could go to the site and click on their about. Hold on, I'm, I'm not, no, I'm, hold on. I'm about sh- so good. Uh, but pretty much they're just making fun of BuzzFeed and Mashable and all these sites, and they just come up with these ridiculous headlines and stuff. And um, what's the one? Upworthy. They're totally making fun of Upworthy, where the headline will be like, um, this might seem silly, but it has a good point. And you're like, what is it? The thumbnail's like this little alligator that's like, like a cartoon <laughs> alligator. And you click on it, and it's just a 10-second video of an alligator just like dancing around. And then there's just words at the bottom that says racism's bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is my. This is the one Marty tweeted and I retweeted. It's kind of right? Jesus. Seven classic ninety toys that weren't fun anymore after nine eleven. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. This article's so good. <laughs> Number four, Gak. Remember Gak? Remember that silly fart noise it made when you pushed it back into the container? Remember before you switched on the TV and saw not one, but three harrowing scenes? Downtown New York, the Pentagon, a field smoldering in Pennsylvania. We lost our national innocence that day. <laughs> Number five, crocodile dentist. Those people. Those falling people. <laughs> Number six, Tamagotchi. Seven minutes left in last period. The teacher's talking, but your Tamagotchi is the only thing on your mind. Is it okay? Is it hungry? Is it happy? Back then, before 9-11, your life revolved around thoughts like these. They seemed important. They were important. <laughs> it's just uh, so... Uh, you read their about? Yeah, read their about, because it's, it's so good. Wait, I'm on it. Which part? It's really long, though, Tim. Oh, give, give it to me. There's like a specific yeah. part. Yeah. Um. Hey, game over, Gregory Shaw. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> Where we just read the internet to you. We strive to make sure that all of our content panders to and misleads our readers just enough to make it go viral. <laughs> 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 it's like that is awesome. You see, we don't think anything on the internet should ever have to settle for mere tens of thousands of page views. <laughs> That's it's, awesome. Yeah, it's genius. So I mean, they really are like just, it, like BuzzFeed as much as. <laughs> Jesus, are you okay? No, just coughing. Come now. I thought I slapped you. No, I had a vision you, of you slapping slapped the cough you. out of me. <laughs> just beat him. Buzzfeed is is borderline that sometimes, right? Like where it, it, you're not really getting a value out of that. It's sheer entertainment. So what you might as well just take that second, that little tiny step forward and just make everything up, which Buzzfeed pretty much does anyway, right? Yeah. I mean, all of their list like content. No, Buzzfeed's actually now getting like legitimized. They have a new show Dude, and like they're well, bring, bringing on. I like. I, saw, I, I saw like. They got Daniel Radcliffe like. Breaking news on their show. I saw uh, their EIC, or whoever covers their DC, the guy that covers their DC uh, beat, was on CNN the other night. Yeah, he was on, he's on, he's on, on, on Rachel Maddow. He's crazy. on Rachel Maddow all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had him on, which is crazy, because he's like, his Chiron, his Chiron mm. or name bar, that's what they call it, uh, underneath is like is his name, and I forget his name, and I apologize, but and then it's his like, ex-bouncer slash editor-in-chief of like the DC Bureau of BuzzFeed, which I'm like, that's kind of fun. So they, at least they can fun. have some 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 fun with it. Well, let me ask you this before we wrap this topic up, though. Like, what is What do you think the best website is that you visit? Because to me, like, I visit these websites and they're good. Like, that's been silly and Drudge Report is just yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. terrible. Mm. You know, like, but I like it. The best website, like, the website I'm really in awe of, and everyone who knows me knows what the answer to this is Grantland. Like, mm-hmm. that website is phenomenal. I like... It's just really, 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 really good. Like the writing is superb. It's funny or serious or smart. Long form, short form, mm-hmm. mailbags. The only th- and they have podcasts. They don't give a fuck about video. They don't give a fuck about images. They'll have these long ass articles about with t- ten thousand words with like no. Im- like just read it or don't. Then you know, and it's like and it's longer. like and it's so good. And they're like and Bill Simmons is like, who's the editor in chief is like a fucking phenomenon. Like he has more Twitter followers than IGN. 
and he's just the person that runs the site. You know That's what I mean? Amazing. It's like, it's like, to me, it's like, man, like I look at that site and I'm like, it's so good. It's so, so, so good. And you know, some of the more clever things I like that they do is, uh, there's this woman there that writes, um, she scores the, um, she goes to, like the New York times or wall street journal, or whatever. And like, looks at the, the culture pages for like high brow wedding announcements. Mm-hmm. And she scores them based on like how, like what, like, is there an Ivy League school? Did they meet at an Ivy League school? <laughs> Are there two Ivy League schools? Should be like plus two for a mention of yacht, plus three for a mention of vacation in St. Martin or something like that. Like all these beautiful, like, so there's like all this brilliant, weird shit going on there in addition to their sports coverage or their TV coverage or whatever. But like their, their TV coverage, their movie coverage, their sports coverage, uh, culture coverage, all the best. Like all of it. See, I don't think, I don't think I have a number one site anymore. Like Tim was talking about, uh, it's given to me by all of my friends and the people that I follow. So like, that'd be Twitter. Twitter. Twitter oh, but yeah, but I don't count Twitter as a site. I count it as an app, right? Yeah, I, don't, I, I very seldom go to weird. Twitter.com. I'm usually, this is what happens. When, this is how my Twitter experience is. And it's me walking around, like stopping, clicking on something, Getting waiting for bus. it to load. If it loads, you know, if it's an Instagram picture, I'm like, nope, not going to look at that. You get yeah, two I don't seconds. look at Instagram. You get two yeah. seconds if to it load, load and then right. you're gone. So here's the thing with the, the gifts now on Twitter. So they added them. I'm super excited about this. They never work. Ever. Work in the Twitter's, they'll Twitter's work. They'll in, figure it out. like when it opens up in the quote unquote Twitter browser, it's the worst experience, in my opinion. Oh, it's so the only thing that are good is pictures because it shows you a little bit of it and it tempts you to want to click on more of it. Yeah. And now, since I follow Richaholics, he retweets so many kind of sub dirty pictures. And that, and I, like, remember when we had that topic is Instagram porn? Mm-hmm. And you were like, no, Nick, Twitter's porn. Twitter is porn. It is it's, porn. Yeah. And now that there's gifts. I'm seeing previews of this and I yeah. want to see it and I click on it and it never loads and it's so upsetting. Yeah. I'll never get to know where that was going. Yeah. <laughs> where have you heard about this new thing? Um sex after sex selfies? Ugh. Oh my god, no. That's a thing now. Thanks, Richard Hollicks. He's retweeted it Thanks, Rich Hollicks. It's like it's dudes that are just like after sex will the girl will be like sleeping or Oh, play, they're like, if the girl's sleeping, yeah, I don't like that. I want no, her like again. The thing is, like again, all these are fake. I, none of these are like real, right? These people all know they're doing it. At least that's how I get to the day. That's how I rationalize it. But you didn't answer. No one answered the question. What is the best website? I mean, I, I think I, I'm. Well, the problem it gets into this weird thing of what it is. I think Twitter would probably be the best website if that's disqualified for being an app. I think then it's got to be YouTube. And I mean, don't well, I think wrong, that's the same thing though. Like to me, I think the word like platform mon- comes exactly, to mind. Yeah, and that then. Websites are just so weird. I think just because it has a URL doesn't make it a website. Like, I think, I think what I think, Colin's saying is what's the best website that's programmed for and they like have to a be a website and like it's a there's a voice behind it where Twitter doesn't that's have so a voice. That's so antique internet though. That's mm-hmm. not modern internet, and that's yeah. what we live in now. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, but I, I agree with that. But I also, YouTube, disagree, yeah, I also disagree with that. I mean, like, I think I think we can all agree that like webs, you know, the internet's moving towards these platforms, apps, easy access to especially media, so like video, imagery, gifs. But a website like Grantland, which is massive um, and growing, uh, proves that there's an appetite still for it, and and w- appetite for that kind of thing. What I love the most about them is even though video is so important, we love making videos and doing videos. Like they don't do videos at all. You know, like yeah. mm-hmm. it's like their their video footprint is very small compared to their you know their written footprint. And so I'm really happy about the success of Grantland because it's like, it's a long form. It's not appealing to the eye. They're not trying to like get you to click on fancy headlines. In fact, their headlines are not very good a lot. You know what you're getting when you Mm -hmm. click on their stuff. Um, And they just tell really fascinating stories. They do this. One of my favorite things they do is oral history, as they call them, where it's like um, they'll go to like a certain event. The best one I think is about the, the World Series between the A's and the San Francisco Giants when the earthquake happened. That was like what the whole oral history is about. And um, they go back and they don't, that's none of them at all talking. It's just like they go talk to 25 people and just put everything in sequence. Yeah. And it just lasts forever. I, I've taken tr- entire train rides reading this stuff and I'm like, this is so good. People still appreciate the written word. They that. do. And, no, and, they like, do. and that's like, as a writer and a, a person who reads and enjoys that kind of thing, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I take heart See, at websites like that. My problem then is that we're just defining it in such a box, putting website in such a box, then I have none. I don't go yeah. to any website like that anymore. I don't go, I mean, I, you know, I use Twitter, yeah, I get I linked out to that, I go to IGN, like, if you count IGN, I go to Reddit, which I also don't count, because that's a platform for people to bring things together and show, and then you go to, yeah. I, they, you know, like so many of them are, today I learned X, and it's like having a conversational column where I click and I read the Wikipedia page about something else, you know what I mean? Does yeah. Wikipedia count? Like, yeah, literally, like, click, yeah, Tim just said, does. you gotta go to Clickhole more, I just followed him on Twitter, that's how I go now. Yeah, exactly. That's how, that's like, if it had to, if I had to choose a website, I think I'm going Chive. 
You gotta do one. I'd probably go because superficial. Superficial they, to me is still chive. A, it's that chive. Sorry. The chive. Like the, the yeah, chive. I, like I said, their quality, like the things that they curate, they'll lead me to the right. So place. the superficial okay. for me is because I, I, you know, I love pop culture. I still am a huge. I'm from Southern California, so I still have that in my blood of like I need to know all the gossip that's happening in L.A. and New York and anywhere else where there's bikini-clad women. Um, so I love the superficial, and again, just to back it up, if you've never been to it, the guy that writes for that is an evil genius, and. But I still get a lot of news that way, right? He he breaks news to you, but he does it in such a unique voice that it's constantly entertaining. Unlike some of the sister sites for that that uh, that property, because there's a couple other sites that you can link to that I'm not. I don't really care for all that much. But Geekology's awesome. Geekology's okay. It, it never I got me. Geekology. It never it, it never yeah sparked me coming back. But the superficial, I read it like three times. I'm like, this is an everyday thing for me. I have to do it. Before we move on, real quick, I'm just gonna give a shout to two websites I don't go to very often, but when I do, I'm always entertained. Uh, smoking gun. Mm-hmm. I don't know how the hell they get some of the shit that's on that website, but that's like an amazing website. Like I really don't understand how they're getting some of the shit they're getting, and they're getting some like deep shit. For a lot of people that don't know, smoking gun is like they'll just like leak subpoenas and like lawsuits and like hidden documents, secret. Like it's an amazing website. Whenever I go there, I'm like, what the fuck? You know, like how mm-hmm. do you get this stuff? The other website, and people may get mad, might not is TMZ. Which is probably mm. one of the most brilliant websites ever created. So I stopped going. Yeah, I stopped going to TMZ. I, I don't time. often go there. I, I Drudge Report links out to it a lot. Sorry, I have something in my eye. But uh, you know, I'm always impressed by them too. Like they people give TMZ a lot of shit, and that's fine. Like they deserve it or whatever. They break probably more news than anyone. You know, as far as like mm. I don't again like they just it, the scoops mm. aren't very important, but like some of them are, I guess. But like where are they getting this stuff? You know, like this is the stuff I'm most curious about. Like who are your sources? And how much money are you spending to like extract all this shit from people? Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, those two websites are pretty interesting to me. That? Why don't you go there anymore? To TMZ, yeah, because they put like you know we've talked about this a little bit. I don't respond well to negative slants on things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like everything in my life to be positive. Like I think there is a way oh. of presenting commentary in a positive light or a negative light. And TMZ for me was always that sort of like you'd go and you'd sort of feel like you were. It was making like a, fun of everything. They were making fun of everything, but not in a in a light that I was going to draw some sort of positive conclusion from. Right? When you go to the superficial, and he is making fun of everything, but it's very self deprecating. It's very much like everyone's included on the joke. Whereas like egotastic and TMZ are just, and they do a lot of just. They just it seems like they don't have any standard. It's just whatever will get a click, however debase or however low they have to go to do it. You know, there was like a big thing where like a lot of Hollywood started. Uh, uh, protesting TMZ because they were like posting way too many pictures of people's kids, like that was a thing. Mm. And so th- it's that kind of. There's post- no standard. There's no moral standard on that site, and I just can't. I don't think I can go. They posted it. a video of the aftermath of Tracy Morgan's. Uh, yeah, and to which like a bunch of people or... were like, "Please pu- pull that." Like yeah. Louis C.K. came out and said, "Like had this big thing where he was like, please take that down.'" Now it's, here's it's the thing about this. Inappropriate. Here's the thing about this, is that all those tweets and people retweeting that made me go to the website and look at the video. Because mm. I didn't even know it existed. Stry sound so you gotta be kind you gotta be kind of stry sound effects, not stry sound effect. You gotta be you gotta be kinda careful of of giving Wait, more how is power. it not the stry sound effect? The stry sound effect is when you put something on the internet and take it down. Ah yes, good call. Um no, I hear you. I hear you. Anyway. Cool. Good topic. Colin. Uh so Greg, my topic is about a box we received in the mail. Oh. wait, I have to okay, you start this, I have to go to the back. I just slammed that water at the beginning of Greg's topic to before he ran. No, go ahead. You sure? Yeah. So, gentlemen, uh, last week uh, to work to our IGN address, we received a package from um, a mystery man. It says, uh, for Game Over Greggy show, uh, Greg, Colin, Nick, and Tim. It's That's who it's mailed to. Greg, Colin, Nick, and Tim. <laughs> awesome. Remember, don't, Co- you don't have to send us anything. Don't send us anything. Yeah, we appreciate it, but you don't have Give to. Give us we, the we, dollar. We prefer that you <laughs> freaking MP3. That's all. Buy a t-shirt. Uh, so I, won't, Finnegan, like, like, I won't pull up the town that this comes from, but it is a town from upstate New York. Okay. <laughs> do we know that? Does, was, I'm sorry. Was the name on the return address yet? Do we know who, who gave this to us yet? Yeah, there was. I'm sure there's a note. There's. There I can already see paper. I can already see paper. I can already see paper. Get in Something there. Gordon. Go- oh my God, Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> okay. So we have a thing that says. Oh, let me get to the mic. First of all, this package. Yeah. Really heavy. This package is about the weight Greg was when he came out of his mom's womb. So Boom! Shagalake. Pounds, uh, it says, nine ounces. Letter. Open first, please. 
Do we worry like, that it looks like serial killer handwriting? No. <laughs> Do we bring that up yet? Okay. Stop it. it go like into serial it. Serial killer handwriting. I'm fucking around. It's the game of Greggy Show. Thanks for listening. Don't send us stuff. That's how I open envelopes too. Really? I try to do it nicely, and then if it fucks up, I'm like, yep, yeah, you just nope, tear it apart. It's doing it this way. What is this? Oh, it's a wiener dog. Dear Greg, Colin, Tim, Nick, and Porty. Oh. Good news. Porty's dead. He's not here. Por- One day, Porty's really going to be dead, and you're going to cry. Uh, he's at Brian Altano's house. I'm only here for two days, so it didn't make sense to go get him from Brian's house because he was already watching him, dropping back. You know. Yeah. Um. Enclosed in this package is a lot of good trill stuff. <laughs> First off, the two fragile packages are Oreos for Greg to review if he would no. like to. The two flavors are fruit punch and watermelon. We do need to get both of those on the oration. <laughs> but you guys got to po- promise to watch them if I do it. I am not sure if you guys have these by you or not. Also, I have not tried them yet, so I cannot tell you how they are. Not sure that what Nabisco has been smoking lately, though. They've been smoking that green, that money. Yeah. Get paid. I tried to pack them really well, so I hope they are not damaged. So let's get those out first. Okay. So we have, first of all, we have, let's see what these favorites are. What if there was a Bob's discount furniture ad in it? The, the marketplace today.com. I don't know. Don't look at the boxes. There's I'm not box. looking. Don't look, look, Nick. Wait, did I miss the letter? Somebody We're in the middle of it. He okay. sent Oreos for review. Okay. He sent watermelon and fruit punch, which we do need to do. So stuff. I assume that this is it. You want to yeah, he said the two fries. Open that. Sure. Of course, Greg gets the box that says fragile. <laughs> He's a in his there we go. Oh man! Daylight at the end of the tunnel. The fruit punch. Oh my god! Without doing the patented oration first look, I can't tell you they are intact. So the fruit punch made it. Bam! The rumor on the net is that these are terrible. Mm, they don't look good. Yeah, man. Fruit punch artificially flavored. I didn't know there was a a normal fruit punch natural flavor. Yeah, truth. There's actually a tree there's that makes the Oreos. fruit punch. Oh, uh, those are gonna be darling. Also intact. They're in good shape. I feel like okay. those. I'm calling it right now. Those are gonna be the winner. The watermelon. That's nine point five right there. Okay. The second items are six cans of Bush's Grill and Beans. Oh. A so little gross. while back, Colin said if someone sent in Bush's beans to the show. That Greg would eat them on camera. I didn't know. <laughs> so here you go. One of each flavor. Enjoy. That's disgusting. Did, did he send a can opener? Because I can go get a can opener. Uh, Southern Pit Barbecue. Ooh. That's extra smoky right there. Slow Greg. cooked. Black Bean Fiesta. Wow. It's like it's like Mexico in your mouth. Texas Ranchero. Oh, I'm it's into like that one. Texas and you take them into Texas in your mouth. Steakhouse Recipe. How many are in there? How how Six? heavy was this box? Bourbon and really brown heavy. sugar. Oh, there you go. Some bourbon. A little bit of that brown sugar. Smokehouse tradition. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's gonna be the smokiest. So grab we'll like we'll that, that in a minute. Me. I don't. I didn't agree to eat any of these. You should have made it. You should have made a. If a it's protest, it's, ask the audience. I'm protesting right now. No, if Greg said this on camera, I didn't say no, this. I, he said someone. He said no, Colin. He said Colin said. <laughs> if Greg said it on camera, everyone. Tell I us. didn't. So now I'm this done. is unusual. This is unusual. I feel like there might be some confusion here. Mm-hmm. He said the bourbon one is his favorite. It also is the OG Bush's Grill and Beans flavor. By the way, okay. I like he use OG and Trill in in this letter already. All right. The third items are two cans of Coke for Colin. Now he says. I needed to fill up space in the box, and I know Colin loves his Coke. Now, I do love Coke. You do love Coke. You've talked uh, about that, how you yeah. stopped drinking Coke. So, I just didn't know if it was... It. Also, since there are cans, you don't have to worry about them going flat overnight. So, so long as you finish your can, I have faith oh, that you right, will. the two liters, yeah. Yeah, he's so talking that's about good. the two yeah, yeah. No, okay. I understand so I the confusion. Though. Right, right, right. I just yeah. want to make sure. As like for Coke. Tim and Nick, I have nothing else to offer you but my love. What is this person's name? Richard Gordon. Richard Gordon. I love you, Your love is enough. So, I enclose two photographs of me blowing you each kisses. Good lord! That went from like <laughs> awesome to uh, to oh awesome. my god. They're actually photographs, like printed out from of, like a, a Kodak. We gotta start putting things on the wall. Well, these are going on the wall. This is going on the wall. This is for Nick. Thank you. <laughs> this is amazing. Guac up the camera. Get it nice and close. Here are, the <laughs> Here are the cokes. World Cup cokes. Of course oh. they are. Because everybody cares about the World Cup now. Man, and he drew a little heart too. I like in case I didn't know. Nope. Not gonna be able to see that. Tim, hold yours up. I'll zoom in. How about that? Stand by, everyone. He's a nice kitchen. I like the stash. There's sign too. You're welcome, he says. <laughs> there it is. 
Wow. This is a crazy ass package. <laughs> That's good, Tim. Okay, there's more. For Porty, I threw in a squeaky tennis ball. Oh. Oh my god, it's so small. Yeah, well, Porty's a small dog. But it's a little tennis ball. I also have a Dachshund. Or Dachshund. But don't worry. It's a fresh tennis ball. <laughs> Thank you all immensely for what you guys do. You have turned some of my worst days into some of my best with just one video. I cannot thank you enough for that. Hopefully, I'll get to meet you all someday. Keep doing God's work, fellas. Lastly, Colin, I'll make sure to eat a New York water bagel in your honor. Aww. Much love, Richard Gordon, at Babby3009, at B-A-B-B-Y-3009. How is Babby formed? Oh, uh, he has a picture of his dachshund here. He says, here's a picture of me and my wiener. His name is Duke, you know, like the king, Aww. baby. So the, the picture's not coming out very very good. It's a little dark. That's, I can yeah. see it. It's cute. Uh, PPS, asked him if he would deflower Rapunzel. From Tangled, the version of her at the end with short brown hair, that version of her is the top of my list. Okay. Both of those, good calls. I don't know which one I'd prefer, though. I've got, are you guys familiar with Tangled? No, no, but I'm more of a brunette fan, so I'll just... So, I mean, here's the thing. There. Rapunzel has the long blonde hair, and I was like, yes! And then mm. at the end of the movie, it goes away, and she has short brown hair, and I was like, yes! Yes, sir. Like oh, more. man. Okay. And also, she makes a cameo appearance in Frozen. At the Does wedding. she? Yeah. Oh, that's right. They all did. There was a bunch of cameos, right? Yeah. Well, her and Flint someone's Rider. like their heart is flipped. So, yeah. Another bus full of nuns dead. That was a really nice surprise. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. So now we'll have uh, great. Not in your fucking life. If yeah. I do that, if I eat a spoonful of beans, you eat a spoonful of mustard. Oh my god, it's not gonna happen. That's, I know. That's there so you much go, worse then. for there me. There you go. No, it is not. Mustard. It's disgusting. I don't. No, you'll eat anything. <laughs> I'll eat a spoonful of ketchup and mustard. Eat one of the batteries I just bought. Five dollars at the little. I don't think I could eat mustard. I don't think I can eat that. I'm not convinced. Not even smoke smokehouse tradition. Greg, why Tender don't we start? Why don't we do this? Not this week. Up. Maybe next week we'll just open up the can and have it permeate throughout the room. No. And just see <laughs> what happens. Nothing is saying is happening. We'll put a little bit. Like here's what you should do: is eat them cold. That way it's not like the warm flavor in your mouth. Maybe that would help a little it's bit. It's still diarrhea and yes. vomit. Is all it is. I don't think it's either of those things. This is sm- there's read, flavors read, here, dude. Read me the bourbon flavor. What's I don't the bourbon give a called? shit. What the flavor bourbon is. and brown sugar? Doesn't that sound delicious? It's like a pop tart for adults. No, that's. Even that, you somehow made it grosser. <laughs> I think you can do it. Beans as a pop tart? No, there's thank a, by you. By the way, there's enough there to fill up a small bathtub for you to bathe in. If oh that's if you want to do that instead. No, okay. I don't want to do anything with these beans. beans. I'm not pushing nope. it on you. I'm just saying. He eats a spoonful of mustard. I'll eat a spoonful of I'm, beans. That's the now standing tradition. I really believe that. I would. I, it's worse for me than it is for you. All right. I believe that. I'm, you're allowed to heart. believe whatever you want. In my heart. Now, okay. We didn't touch on this, and I know we're kind of out of time, but. When you were on your insane, like, rant of, like, a lunatic madman about the World Cup, you didn't even touch on the logo of the World Cup. I don't have a problem with the logo. I mean, it looks like like Picard's face palming. Yes, we've all seen this. It looks hideous. It looks like uh, uh, hands are coming out and and, and dragging the ball to hell. (laughs) That's true. That's what it looks like. It's terrifying to me. (laughs) I just wanted you guys to know that. I like that the back of the... These are cans, Coke cans from New York for sure, because... They have the Six Flags Great Adventure logo on the back. Beautiful. Nice. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the Game Over Greggy show every week. Four, sometimes five best friends gather on this table, each bringing a random topic of conversation for your amusement. If you like that, pick up the MP3 every Friday over at GameOverGreggy.Bandcamp.com for $1. If you don't think we're worth the dollar, don't worry, we don't either. So the next following week, you go to YouTube.com slash GameOverGreggy, and every day, one by one... We post the topics for your amusement leading into the big show. Sometimes we start on Sunday. We keep you on your yeah. toes, like Ooh. we're doing this time. Because we had that extra topic at the beginning. So we'll start oh, yeah, on you're Sunday. Right. Best man. We're crazy. Kevin Best Hart. Best man, Kevin Hart. You son of a bitch. Uh, make sure you get over to districtlines.com slash Game Over Greggy. Buy yourself a new t-shirt. Team Fat's hopefully up. It's if not, look for it very soon. Pick up the Oreo shirt. Pick up Colin for president. We got a bunch of cool stuff. There might be a Tim shirt coming. There might be a Tim another shirt. Tim shirt. Yeah. Just there was the Hella shirt. We got another secret. Hella's amazing. Coming. Thanks for all your support on that, guys. Thanks for going out. In general, thank you for your support. I, I, you know, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Gordon over here, Mister yes. Gordon, right? That was his full name, or was it Gordon something? Ricardo, no, Richard. Richard Gordon. Richard, Gordon. Richard, Gordon. Richard, Gordon. Richard Gordon. Gordon. So, Mister Gordon. <laughs> I don't know Shout I like out to Ricardo. Spanish. Uh, you said, you know, Ricardo that we Gordon. get you through some of your worst days with one video. Your support every day on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, everything else gets us through our worst days. So thank you for all your positive feedback. It has been our pleasure to serve you and for everyone who's requested it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> A lot of requests for that lately. Really? Yeah. yeah.
Right? Mm-hmm. Set to. <laughs> what? Fuck, Fuck you, man. He just made a Tokyo <laughs> Drift reference already, and I liked it. <laughs> you want to say, do, you, do you want to tell the audience what we just did? You don't even know what happened, the magic. I, no, I started to talk, and then Jimmy No, you said ready, and he said set to. Jimmy Jickles. <laughs> Are you ready? Because this is all going to the end of the podcast, right. so they can all see right. how you did this to that's me. That's fine. 